Pure Pro One G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, January 20th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Thank you for tuning into the show tonight. We've got an extended broadcast for you. I'm going to be joined live in studio by David Knight and others from the crew to give you our take on this year's State of the Union or State of the Dictatorship. But first, let's get right into it. This is some incredible news. I mean, well, I guess if you want to look at it about how corrupt our government is, it might not be the greatest news. But when you take it into the fact that the military knows what's going on, they know that there's a coup in the government, they're exposing it, they're exposing that Obama et al. has switched sides. Now we have generals concluding that Obama backed Al Qaeda. This is coming from the Citizens Commission on Benghazi. They have concluded in their interim report that the Obama White House and the State Department under Hillary Clinton changed sides in the war on terror. In 2011, they implemented a policy of facilitating the delivery of weapons to the Al-Qaeda-dominated rebel militias in Libya who were attempting to oust Gaddafi from power. Now, we told you about that, and here it is right in this report. Now, several members of the commission have disclosed their findings that the mission of Ambassador Stevens was the management of a secret gun-running program operated out of the Benghazi compound. What did we tell you? Just like, you know, Eric Holder's Justice Department operating fast and furious. Now, in a paragraph titled, Changing Sides in the War on Terror, the report alleges that the U.S. was fully aware of and facilitating the delivery of weapons to the Al-Qaeda-dominated rebel militias throughout the 2011 rebellion. Now, Jerome Corsi of World Net Daily conducted exclusive interviews with 11 of the 17 members of this commission. He spoke with Alex Jones today on the Alex Jones radio show in depth about this research that he had done. He talks about Obama changing sides, aligning with Al-Qaeda, breaks down the alliances there, and calls it a triple cross, um, and just really talks about this whole turnaround. That was in the third hour of the Alex Jones Show today. I know that's been uploaded to YouTube. Definitely go check that out. It is really hard hitting. But of course, like I said, this is great news for us. This is how we win. If we can wake up the military, wake up law enforcement, Wake up those people who are working for the state. That's how we win. We got to get in from the inside. And basically the military turning against the bad elements in the government is exactly what happened in Turkey. That's how it's come out now that Turkey's prime minister was caught arming Al Qaeda. This is according to Turkish military officials. Turkey's prime minister, who's a NATO ally, is shipping arms to Al Qaeda and ISIS via Syria-bound trucks operated by the country's intelligence agency. Now, after receiving a tip that trucks were carrying weapons and explosives to Al-Qaeda in Syria, the Gendarmerie General Command and Prosecutor Aziz Takai ordered the search of these vehicles. And here is what happened. So the trucks were being escorted for an extensive search. They were being accompanied by MIT, which is Turkey's intelligence agency. They were accompanying the trucks, and then all of a sudden they blocked the road to stop the trucks. The MIT personnel seized the keys from the truck's ignitions, and then they got into a physical altercation with the general command. And then according to these Turkish, Turkish military officials, the governor of Adana arrived at the scene declaring the trucks were moving with the prime minister's orders and vowed not to let them be interfered with no matter what. He provided a letter of guarantee that was sent by the regional director of MIT, co-signed by the governor 
and then the trucks were handed back to MIT. Now, of course, in response to this, the Turkish prime minister banned the media from reporting about it, and all 13 of the soldiers who were involved with this search have been charged with espionage, and they're facing 20-year prison terms. So what's the big deal? Well, in this unauthorized search that they were tipped off via military officials, they discovered 45 to 55 missiles or rockets, 30 to 40 crates of ammunition, including mortar rounds, and anti-aircraft ammunition. So that is a very big deal, and here is our writer, Kit Daniels, with more. This is Kit Daniels with Infowars.com. Now, recently, the Prime Minister of Turkey, which is a NATO country, was caught by his own military smuggling guns to ISIS in Syria. Now, why would he do that? For one thing, Turkey is predominantly Sunni Muslim, whereas Syria is Shiite Muslim. And there's been a centuries-old conflict between Sunnis and Shiites. Also, Syria rivals Turkey as a place to put a strategic oil pipeline running from Russia to the west. Now, if this pipeline is worth billions of dollars, maybe even trillions of dollars, and it would be to NATO's benefit if the pipeline was run through Turkey so they could geopolitically isolate Russia if they wanted to. So this is why you see Turkey openly funding, arming, training ISIS as part of their proxy war to topple the Syrian government so they can go into Syria, take the oil, then install a public regime that promotes their own agenda. Once again, this is Kit Daniels with Infowars.com. Now, if you want to know even more about this, just go to the article, Kit Daniels article. It's up there, Infowars.com. Turkey's prime minister caught arming al-Qaeda. And you can click on an interview that we did with Sibel Edmonds. She's a whistleblower. She exposed a long time ago how the West was using Turkey as an operator in false flag war of terror. She goes on to describe how Osama bin Laden had ties to the CIA. Basically, the same exact characters, the same exact history repeating itself. And go there, get a history lesson on this false flag, and then you can see that it's the exact same thing that is currently happening today. And also goes on to really explain how it's completely insane that they're talking about arming the rebels once again. Now stick around because coming up, I've got an explosive interview with Mark Passio. He's gonna talk with me about occultism and mind control. But before that, find out what we told you about the police state. We predicted it a decade ago, and now it is in the mainstream news. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is, it's hard. Even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. City of Austin tap water. Okay. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the Pro Pure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. 
Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking top water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. Well, no doubt tonight's State of the Union address is going to feature Obama calling for tighter cybersecurity legislation. And he's probably not going to talk about their surveillance state. And he's definitely not going to be talking about the fact that cops don't even need a warrant to see inside your home. Now, we told you about this more than a decade ago, but here it is. At least 50 U.S. law enforcement agencies have secretly equipped their officers with radar devices that allow them to effectively peer through the walls of houses to see whether anyone is inside. These agencies include the FBI and the U.S. Marshal Service. They began deploying the radar systems more than two years ago with little notice to the courts, no public public disclosure of when or how they would be used. Now these radars work like finely tuned motion detectors. They use radio waves to zero in on movements as slight as human breathing from a distance of more than 50 feet. And they can detect whether anyone is inside of a moving house, where they are, and whether they are moving. And there's a pretty good diagram of exactly how these um, things are working. Now, the agent's use of the radars was largely unknown until December. This is because a federal appeals court in Denver said that officers had used one uh, before they entered a man's house in order to issue an arrest warrant. The judges there expressed alarm because they used this technology without first getting a search warrant. Obviously, this raises grave Fourth Amendment questions. And they also say, you know, the technology then was hardly new because federal contract records show the Marshal Service began buying these radars in 2012. They've spent about $180,000 on them. Ah, but see, if you'll recall, Alex Jones and all of the rest of us here at the InfoWars crew were called crazy because we were telling you about this technology more than a decade ago in Police State 2 and Police State 3. Straight out of the running man, right here in New York, we have police state surveillance blimps that are sponsored by Fuji Film. This is only the beginning. In the future, every major city will have a high altitude blimp tethered to a cable with ground penetrating radar that looks right through your walls and gives the government a black and white image of the inside of your home. This entire war on terror is truly a pretext to launch a military industrial complex takeover of the entire society. Everything is now going to shift into prisons and surveillance and security. We're going out of the free market economy into the fascist economy. The elite has used socialism to consolidate the people's wealth. Now that it's under their control, they're going to phase out all of the programs for the population and it's all going to corporate welfare. This is the new America. Sound weapons, police in black ski masks with automatic machine guns. And yes, helicopters swarming around surveillance blimps right here in New York City. And only in the new corporate fascist America would we have a blimp for police state purposes uh, that is sponsored by a major company. And we found out that Fuji gave free bikes to all the police. And guess why? They sold the U.S. government, a bunch of different city governments, or trying to sell other city governments, these high-tech imaging systems, these face scanning systems to recognize who we are. So our face becomes the national ID card, and Fuji is on the cutting edge of that. In the past, football teams had sponsors or baseball teams. Then it was named stadiums after phone companies, Southwestern Bell, Nextel. Now we have the Fuji-sponsored NYPD blimp. Follow the blimp. The blimp just flew over. Yeah, man. Follow that blimp. Don't lose it. We're using that blimp for surveillance. We always know where the protests are at. There it is, sir. Follow that blimp. 
No, Luis, but what is it? What are you guys thinking of the new security blimp? I can't get nice. I want to know how you get qualified to uh, drive the blimp. Uh, it says Fuji and NYPD. Yes, it yeah. does. So I want to go to blimp school because I want to I want to fly the blimp. So is Fuji now with the police department or are you guys renting it? I think we're renting it, you know? Renting the blimp? Yeah, believe it or not, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> I heard a story that the police in, in, in some of their helmets have cameras. That I didn't ever heard. <laughs> I saw it on Fox. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. What about the big sound wave guns? Where are those? I haven't read that. I know nothing about it. Did you hear about those? No, I didn't. Did you hear about how they got the I can't, I can't comment on anything like that. Now we're going to look at biometrics, the cashless society control grid. It'll be satellite tracked and taxed to drive an automobile. They're talking about 65 cents a mile during peak times. The federal government is preparing and pushing the states to implement this system. We're talking about RFID tracker chips in the money and almost all products you buy at the store that will track and trace what you do. The Cold War era echelon system is being beefed up to listen to every phone call, read every fax and email, track all purchases made by Americans. And meanwhile, the border stays wide open. This is about total taxation, total control, total surveillance. So I want you to understand this. You're going to be taxed and traced and followed. They want to make it the law, satellite tracking systems in all your cars. The hardware and software is already in all the new cars, just to have the interface plugged in. We're only a few years away from this. Your television sets, that they have digital cable hooked into them, are watching in detail what you watch. They've got face scanning cameras on the streets. They're going in the grocery stores, following and tracking what you're doing, building detailed psychological algorithms on you. Uh, they're face scanning you and thumb scanning you to get driver's license now. Uh, almost all the 50 states have implemented this, or just a few that haven't. That's where they get the face scan and the thumb scan to, to match against you at the grocery store or at the mall. Uh, but all of this is happening while our borders are wide open. And on top of that, we have the Pentagon saying, we're going to watch all Americans. Now, that's the hallmark of Mexico or Russia or Guatemala or communist China. You have the army, the military, watching the people. And uh, for those of you that are watching this program many years from now, I want you to understand that uh, you're going to have more terrorism come out of all this because the very military industrial complex that is now enslaving and taking control of the people are the ones that stand to gain for more terrorism. And the evidence clearly shows they are instituting and carrying out the terrorism. That is small compartmental units of this behemoth federal government that is becoming an imperial world government. Most people in government are good throughout the pyramid, but that key cabal at the top controls and sets the policy for the entire beehive uh, type society. So understand, maximum surveillance, maximum big brother tracking and tracing that dwarfs the nightmare vision of George Orwell in 1984. It's more akin to a THX 1138 Matrix-like system. Uh, the chains are being forged. We're being put in to this brave new world. And people need to face the scope of this electronic straitjacket that's being projected against you and your family. My friends, they've now announced, way back in 2002, that the Scientific Atlantic cable boxes, the digital cable boxes, watch what you watch. They don't just watch you physically. No, no, they pierce your mind. They build psychological algorithms. Every part of the show is Q scored, the psychological rating. The ads are even scored. And it all goes back and computers go through that data, just like cookies when you surf the internet, but with more detail. It's worse than 1984. It doesn't just see what you're physically doing. It builds detailed psychological profiles of you. There's satellite tracker systems already in all the new cars, ready for the hubs to be plugged in. The federal government is announcing that they want to do this. They're preparing the states. We're only a few years away from it. They're standardizing it and promoting it as a safety feature. It'll track, trace, turn your car off, tax the living daylights out of you. Face scanning cameras in the grocery stores. Just total control. Every email, every fax, everything you do tracked and traced. And the symbol is New World Order with an all-seeing burning red eye radiating the earth. Big Brother will be watching America. Giant information matrix to track movements. Federal regulators ease restrictions on technology that can see through walls. This is all their system. They say they're going to have hover drones watching us at all times, 
and they've been given the technology to police for five years. It's a crisp black and white image of everything you do in your home. You're going to look through four feet of concrete, and that's just what they're giving police now. FBI spy planes patrol U.S. and use systems to look through your walls. And it uh, continues, you are a suspect. William Sapphire in the New York Times says, every purchase you make with a credit card, every magazine subscription you buy, medical prescription you fill, every website you visit, email you send or receive, every academic grade you receive, every bank deposit you make, every trip you book, every event you attend, all these transactions and communications will go into what the Defense Department describes as a virtual centralized grand database. And then it says that it will also add all private stuff to that. And they're, you know why they're throwing this in your face? As a chilling effect so you don't stand up against it. Let me give you a little secret. They, ha they can listen to everything we do. They don't have personnel. They had 10 million people. They couldn't read all the billions of faxes and emails and letters, even with keyword software. So they don't have personnel to actually implement this unless you accept all this evil, accept torture, accept this mind warp, and go along with it. They need you to play along. You can stop this. But if you do play along, go ahead and serve them. They're going to absolutely ruin your life and your children's life. They seem to go after folks that serve them even more. It's like God allows it to happen or something. It's, I've just observed it for years. Airline security expert wants to know whether uh, what you have in your heart. Forget about what's in your suitcase. What the government really wants to know is whether you have evil in your mind. And by the way, they now, in Boston Logan Airport, have put a NASA brain scanner in, and four of their airports have put it in. It's total quackery. They've proven the old-fashioned lie detectors a fraud. They've already proven that. Now they go, oh, the brain scanner says you're a terrorist. It shows you're with them. It actually says this. The computer says you're guilty. I mean, think about this. Road cameras raise arrest, push to take number plate scanners nationwide. From England to the U.S., they're scanning your license plates as you drive. A hot car. See, it was just for traffic reports. Now it's, oh, we're going to use it for law enforcement. Yeah. See how that works? They won't put cameras on the border, and the border is being dissolved. Always remember that key point. They're getting rid of the national sovereignty. And now it's just road cameras. They focus on terrorism. See, they've got to watch this, and they've got the tips program where your cable guy and your phone man tattle on you and your neighbors do. And uh, now four New Jersey school districts test the kids when they come into school for drug residue. And bars in New York and in London are, are testing your hands to see if you've taken drugs before you go into the bar. I mean, it's just, it's nuts. It's just crazy. They go, oh, it's voluntary. And also, in-car boxes, safety measure or spy tactic. And I admit, oh, these little boxes are already in all your cars. By the way, Homeland Security is hooked into these private billboards all over that tune into what you're listening to. Did you know that your radios in your car, AM and FM, actually transmit at a low level? And now Homeland Security tunes into what you're listening to. Uh, High-tech billboards tune into driver's taste. And it says, the billboard is listening. San Francisco Chronicle, ABC News. Here's another one, Business Week. Will your TV become a spy? Hollywood wants every new digital set to include a monitoring device. Mmm, that tracks back and reports to them. It seems it's an everyday occurrence to have the National Guard out for, quote, safety checkpoints being conducted with local police. Also in the April 10th, 2000 edition of Around Iowa. It, it seems they're having to propagandize the local public via the papers and condition them that it's okay to have the military out in police uniforms and dressed as civilians. Oh, that's not a telltale sign of the secret police. But don't worry, it says questions have been raised about the use of plainclothes Iowa National Guard troops. But Major Michael Cohen, a lawyer for the National Guard, he says there's no problem. Why, well, he says Congress says that it's A-OK. -okay. Well, I guess they've scrapped Posse Comandatus and we're going the way of Mexico or Russia. How can any serious American watch this? Anyone that has an even basic grasp of human history.
sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation. The exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12. Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The Molon Lave Silver Coin, certified by the Provident Mint. This one-ounce silver round is 0.999% fine silver, inspired by the legendary Spartan King Leonidas and his refusal to lay down arms in defiance of Emperor Xerxes. Molon Lave, that's Greek for come and take it. This is available now at InfoWarsStore.com. Act now as supplies are limited. And don't forget, free shipping and a free gift. That's InfoWarsStore.com. My guest today is Mark Passio. He is an independent researcher, radio talk show host, a public speaker, and also a freedom activist from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And he has assembled a vast amount of knowledge on occultism, uh, spirituality, metaphysics, symbology, and consciousness. You can find all of that information on his website, whatonearthishappening.com, as well as freeyourmindconference.com, and he joins me today to talk about occultism and mind control. So Mark, thank you for joining us today. I know we've got a lot to talk about in a short amount of time. So I wanted to kind of give a, a tripart question here first, uh, just kind of give a little bit of a backstory. I've heard you say in a few of your lectures that you were um, actually a practitioner of the dark occult. Obviously, this is where some of your expertise comes from. You can confirm that these occultic symbols are being employed. They do have power. But what does that mean? Um, what does that mean as far as you are practicing? Was that like Satanism, Luciferianism, some sort of other dark occult that I don't really know about? And then, of course, what compelled you to kind of seek out that knowledge and, and what was it that helped you kind of realize that maybe that wasn't wh where you wanted to spend your energies? Sure, that's a really great question. Well, in my youth, I kind of accepted uh, without much questioning a lot of the uh, religious dogma and indoctrination that I had been given by family members and school teachers. And I, I come from a, uh, a pretty standard Roman Catholic Italian background in South Philadelphia. And my family was kind of the type that never really uh, challenged belief systems, certainly never questioned authority, anything like that. Uh, and, you know, back then when I was given a lot of those dogmatic beliefs and kind of accepted them, uh, I certainly lacked a lot of the knowledge about uh, what religious indoctrination is about and why it's done. I certainly didn't know anything about astrotheology at that time. And um, a lot of that knowledge probably could have put some of that indoctrination into perspective. But since I lacked it, um, my um, disillusionment with uh, modern organized religion turned into extreme anger. And I acted upon that anger by uh, attempting to seek out the antithesis of religion, the antithesis of the system into which I was born, and I found it in the form of the dark occult, dark occultism, particularly Satanism, which was the type of dark occultism that I gravitated toward. And I espoused a lot of satanic beliefs and ideologies, uh, particularly through writing and music. Some of my work was eventually recognized by Anton LaVey, who was the high priest of the organization known as the Church of Satan at that time. He has since died. But uh, he asked me to uh, take part in the Church of Satan and become a priest within its membership. And uh, I accepted that offer and I became a priest in the Church of Satan. And what my job was to do was basically, for the most part, um, 
explain the ideology of Satanism to people in, in an attempt to take more people into the ranks of that ideology. Uh, as my involvement with Satanism in general, not just the Church of Satan organization grew, I became aware that this wasn't an isolated group of individuals that were just working with occulted or hidden knowledge in order to uh, essentially grow their own personal power, but they were groups, uh, inter-networked groups of, of people who were working together. Uh, and they were they came from an, a, a, an eclectic array of, uh, of people from every walk of life, every social institution that you could imagine. There were Satanists placed in positions of high power and influence within those institutions, including politics, banking, law, military, law enforcement, entertainment, technology, medicine, education, and every other area of our lives. And they were not isolated individuals that were just trying to increase their own personal power and influence. They were working together as a tight-knit unit toward a common goal, and that common goal was to increase their own collective power at the expense of everyone else's rights and freedoms. When I became aware that that's what the satanic hierarchical network that is in place in this world was all about, that it was in fact about slavery, my consciousness, uh, my, my conscience, I'm sorry, uh, would not allow me to proceed any further with involvement in these groups. And I began to basically pull back from my involvement. And people will often say, well, weren't they extremely angered by that? And didn't they try to keep you in the group? Uh, you know, they were, they were uh, in, initially trying to groom me for higher levels of involvement with other you know, network and think tank groups that, you know, go much higher into politics and certainly into eugenics operations. But uh, when I be became aware of what the overarching agenda of the, the whole satanic hierarchical network that's in place in the world was about, uh, I uh, desisted with my involvement in those groups. And people will ask, well, did they, didn't they try to reel you back in? Didn't they threaten you? Uh, they were absolutely unconcerned with my leaving. Uh, they simply basically said, there's nothing that you can do to change anything. We have people's minds and we have society right where we want it. And go and do your worst and tell people about what you know and that you're going to be banging your head against a concrete wall for the rest of your natural life. So go and do your worst because there's nothing that you could possibly do to hurt us. That was their attitude when I left. Right. Well, it, it is like banging your head against a wall. And, and there are such extreme forces keeping people hypnotized. I mean, just talking about Anton LaVey or the Church of Satan, uh, just the ties with the NSA. I mean, sure. if you want to talk about the surveillance and control, I mean, there is the upper echelons of government. And here was a secret program with the NSA that didn't, you know, didn't wasn't exposed until just recently. Obviously, it's been going on for quite some time. I consider the groups I was involved in very low level, certainly not high level by any stretch of the imagination. I do consider that LaVey was sort of a puppet for these higher level satanic networks and groups and certainly worked with governmental institutions during the time that he was alive. Uh, and, you know, most people don't really understand what the ideology of Satanism is. They think it's about devil worship. It has nothing to do with the worship of the Christian notion of the devil. Uh, this is, uh, Satanism basically has four main tenets or overarching principles of belief. And that is that self-preservation is the highest goal. And um, you should do whatever you can to advance your, your personal power and influence in the world, no matter who you really have to walk all over, step on, or hurt to get what you want. That's really the number one tenet. And if you look at society, most of society is stuck in that cutthroat, dog-eat-dog -dog mentality. Uh, moral relativism is the second major tenet, which is the idea that there's really no such thing as uh, objective standards of right and wrong behavior, that we as human beings can get to basically decide upon our whims what right and wrong are and, uh, you know, m base our actions accordingly. And if you look at most of society, I would say more people than not are moral relativists than moral objectivists who think that there is an objective standard of right and wrong behavior. So that's also very pervasive in society. The third major tenet is social Darwinism, the idea that the most ruthless in society have some sort of a predetermined or predestined right to basically rule over everybody else in society because their genetics got them there and, you know, made them fit for rulership. And 
you know, many people will actually think like that and think that that's okay, that that's just the natural order or the way things are. You know, so that's also very pervasive in our society. And finally, the fourth main pillar of, of Satanism is eugenics, the idea that those who are socially fit to rule and they're the, the fittest in society and therefore they've come out on top and they're ruling the roost, well, they can get to decide who basically propagates their genes and who does not, or in other words, who gets to live and who, who dies, who must die. Wow, that's incredible because that's obviously so many things that we're trying to expose here at InfoWars. And, you know, we talk about this self-preservation thing a lot, even when you see uh, these members of secret societies and how you think, how do these people literally get away with murder sometimes or awful things that are hidden, um, pedosadism, things like that, that you wonder how are these people in the law enforcement or politics, how are they these crimes being covered up? But it is this sort of secret society, self-preservation um, system that they have to protect each other and protect this this overarching, um, you know, unforeseen hand that's sort of controlling everything. So, what about these uh, occultic symbols that are that they're using and kind of pervading our society? How what's out there that you know of, and how is it being used? Well, I think a good. Uh precursor to this would be to simply explain what the occult is, because many people hear that word and they really don't understand what it means, and they have a erroneous perception of what occultism in general is. The word occult is derived from the Latin language. It comes from the Latin adjective occultus. Occultus in Latin simply means hidden from sight. And, you know, the verb occultare in Latin, occultare, means to hide, to conceal, or to keep secret. So both of these words in Latin are in turn derived from the Latin word oculus. Oculus means eye. So it all has to do with what can be seen and what is not easily seen. That which is hidden from view, which is veiled from our sight, which is difficult to see because in many cases it operates in the realm of the unseen or the spiritual realm. Occultism is a body of science, which is just not generally known to the wide body of human beings. It's hidden knowledge about two overarching fields of um, study of, uh, of human endeavor, and that is the human psyche, the mind, and how the mind works, all of its inner workings and operations, okay? How the, the, the psyche actually operates, what human motivations are and how, how they work. I would call this the inner world, the inner world of the individual. And in the occult, this is often referred to as the, the lesser arcana or the, the body of knowledge that constitutes the microcosmic world. In other words, the world of the individual, the, the psyche. Then there's a second body of knowledge that is about the greater spiritual laws that ultimately the entire universe is bound by and works according to. This would be considered the major or greater arcana of knowledge or the macrocosmic world. This is knowledge about the spiritual laws of the universe and also the physical sciences because much of the physical sciences workings is also occulted and hidden from us so that our society doesn't progress and advance in ways that the people who currently uh, hold the reins of our society don't want it to. So we have to understand that there's a body of spiritual or what I simply refer to spiritual laws or what I simply refer to as natural law in my work that is a, uh, a part of the occult knowledge. It's the, a part of the macrocosmic knowledge that comprises what is known as the major arcana or the greater arcana of occult knowledge. Uh, that being said, those two bodies of knowledge really constitute everything that humanity needs to understand to become free. That's why it is hidden. That's why it is occulted, because the people who are currently enslaving humanity and who, who are currently running our society don't want to, the playing field to be leveled by this knowledge being understood by people. Because if people understood it in mass, they would be able to empower and free themselves from what is being done to them, from them being kept in the condition of human slavery as they are right now. Occult knowledge is neither good or bad. It's not 
uh, something that is inherently positive or negative. The consciousness of the wielder of that knowledge will ultimately determine whether that knowledge is actually being applied for good or ill. In other words, either for the uplift of humanity by spreading it and distributing that knowledge throughout the human population and therefore enlightening people and making them be able to be informed and make their own good choices and good decisions in harmony with the spiritual laws of nature, natural law, or whether that knowledge, that occulted knowledge, will be used for ill, for evil purposes, for control, for manipulation uh, over the people who currently lack it and are ignorant of it. And that's the difference that I would describe between light occultism or what I simply have come to call de-occultism, which is what I consider myself a de-occultist, someone who is trying to bring that hidden knowledge out into the light of day for all to see and understand, versus dark occultism. Dark occultists want to deliberately hide and keep keep that knowledge hidden in order to create and maintain that power differential that they currently have. Well, exactly, because as long as they can keep uh, a false reality, um, people just kind of in a, a fog, um, no one can change the reality because they don't actually have a grasp of what reality actually is. They're just in a trance with all of this symbolism bombarding them everywhere. Obviously, um, the InfoWars viewers, they know all about you know, the all-seeing eye and the right. pentagram and these sorts of things. Um, but this symbolism is, is in advertising, just basic advertising. Talk to me a little about that. Sure, it really goes quite deep. And I think this uh, example that I would like to bring up is going to really illustrate what the occult truly is and how it's applied in society uh, and how it works upon the psyche of individuals that have no idea about the symbols that are used against them. And they have no idea about the deep inner knowledge of the psyche that is wielded over them by people who do very deeply understand it. Uh, to understand this example, we have to just simply delve into the world of archetypes, uh, which are types of basically rudimentary type symbols. An archetype is uh, considered an original pattern from which other patterns or other more advanced type uh, uh, symbols are, are basically based, okay? So it's a model or an original form or a prototype of some kind. And uh, there's some basic symbolic archetypes. Of course, we have the circle, which represents infinity and eternity and perfection and the divine. The circle has always kind of been considered a shape that represents the divine. It's based on a number that cannot really be ever pinned down to exactitude, you know, pi, of course. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it's just a symbol that repre has represented perfection uh, throughout all different traditions in human history. Conversely, the opposite of that, the square, is another archetype, and it's represented stability, but um, also rigidity and imperfection. And it's represented things that are that are earthbound, that are very earthly and and human, as opposed to uh, you know divinity, like the circle represents. Uh, so then we have another archetype, the triangle. You know, we see this a lot in symbolism as well, because it represents balance, it represents union or coming together, of uh, often opposite extremes. It represents the intellect. It represents, uh, in many cases, knowledge. Uh, an ar another archetype is the star, which represents represents spirit or sovereignty. And, you know, that's, of course, used in politics a lot. And we, there's many other archetypes that we could get into, but essentially archetypes resonate deeply with the human subconscious mind. Okay, that's the main thing to keep in mind. It's kind of, archetypes are kind of embedded almost into our, uh, ver the very fabric of our being, into what one might call our ancestral DNA, because these shapes and symbols have been around with us since humanity has been on this planet. Um, uh, the perverted use of symbolism and archetypes goes on constantly in our society. And again, since people are ignorant about how a lot of the symbolism works, it's uh, quite literally a quote-unquote piece of cake for these dark occultists to wield this knowledge in this way. So I want to give a brief example. Uh, Betty Crocker uh, uh, in the 1950s was uh, had designed a new instant cake mix, and they uh, didn't know how this was going to be received by American housewives, and so they did a lot of research and development on this product, and they put it out into the supermarkets. They got distribution for it, spent a whole lot of money to, to do all of that, and then the cake mix was very unpopular. It did not sell well at all. 
And there was an underlying reason for this, but Betty Crocker didn't understand that reason at the time. Okay, well, I'll just give a little bit of a background. Um, they, they, this cake mix, all you needed to do was just add water to the supplied powder. And then, you know, you would bake that and you'd have an instant cake. In that day, that was considered somewhat of an amazing thing. And um, uh, unfortunately, housewives didn't go for it. They, you know, and families in general, they, they, did, they made kind of like a, um, uh, a statement that, that this isn't something that we're interested in by their purchase, by their lack of purchase. And Betty Crocker, instead of saying, well, you know, we've kind of received the mandate from the masses of people, they're not interested in this, uh, they decided that they would make people want the cake mix. What they had to do was attempt to dis, uh, assuage that psychological guilt in those housewives. The way that they did that, very interestingly, was they simply added some words on the instructions on the box. Now, just think about that for one moment. How powerful would a few words on a box be to completely change the mindset of an entire group of people in society. But that's exactly what happened. And this cake mix sold eventually. The three words that they needed to add on the box, so the ad campaign uh, firm comprised of these psychologists told Betty Crocker, just keep the mix the way that it is and add on the instructions, add an egg, add one egg where the three words need to be put on the box. When the housewives read the new instructions upon trying to find out how the cake mix work, worked before they bought it, um, that changed their mind. Now, most people will say, well, what sense does that make and how does that work? And therein lies what the occult actually is, what the knowledge of the occult is, which is what these psychologists applied. That's what we have to understand the occult is. It's deep, ancient, ancestral psychology that is being applied against people who have no idea about how it works. The egg is a symbolic archetype of feminine energy. It is the creative essence of the female that combines with the sperm to create life. It is the feminine fertility symbol. Mm. So that is what they were putting in the mind of the house, housewife. Now you take what we've given you in the cake mix, the, the instant cake mix that's very easy to prepare, okay? And after you have that, you add an egg to the cake mix. So now symbolically, virtually, through proxy, you are giving your feminine creative essence into the project. And in doing that, that th those housewives are now assuaging that guilt that they previously felt by not putting enough of, quote unquote, themselves into this undertaking for their family to make this cake. In adding the egg, that psychologically assuaged that guilt subconsciously without those women ever even understanding what had been done it, through the back door psychologically to them. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what the occult actually is. The cake mix sold like wildfire after they only changed the instructions on the box to add a symbolic archetype to assuage that psychological guilt subconsciously. Wow. Now, if that's not... I mean, a powerful enough example. I don't know what is. This is what people have to begin to understand that occult knowledge is and what it can do and how it can be applied in a perverted way in society to act as sort of a weapon against people that don't understand how it works. I would suggest that's much more than just clever uh, advertising or clever marketing techniques. I would suggest that that is an absolute... Um, perversion of someone else's free will decision-making processes because you are using knowledge that they lack to essentially steer their mind in a particular particular direction without them even understanding how you did that. Absolutely, and obviously that was decades ago. No telling how perverse this is in advertising now. Um, you know, we see it with the with the commercials, McDonald's, Burger King, fast food. You know it's bad for you, but you've just got to go to the drive through right now and Rob Dew actually did a report on uh, GMOs there were a lot of activists calling for labeling for GMOs and then they took them to this sort of think tank uh, meeting and by the time they got out of it they were all pro GMOs so it's just it's just 
pretty amazing how easily we can be programmed. Um, obviously, I know you've got a ton more information that people can find on your website, uh, what on, whatonearthishappening.com. But just in the last few minutes, is sure. there any advice on how to avoid all of this? Or is it all just a matter of educating yourself to the reality so that you can, you know, avoid being brainwashed, basically? Well, I would say like any other aspects of problem solving, in looking for a solution to what we're facing today in our world, which is uh, certainly about mind control and occultic manipulation of the human psyche uh, through knowledge that is being perverted and exploited. Uh, the first step is to recognize that the problem exists and to begin to understand not only that the problem exists, but what are the causal factors of that problem. I would suggest deep ignorance is one of the largest causal factors of the problem that we face as a species. We could talk about the symptoms, you know, and all the different aspects of society that are broken until we're blue in the face, but they're really symptoms and they're effects of the underlying causes. We need to stop trying to treat the symptoms and we need to get go into the realm of consciousness and the understanding of this uh, heretofore occulted information, this occulted knowledge, because it's knowledge that has been hidden about how we work. That's some of the most important knowledge that there is, is self-knowledge. And then the other knowledge that's been hidden is the, the knowledge about how the universe works, particularly the spiritual laws of the universe. See, when we start to understand the causal factor lies in ignorance, we're making a diagnosis about the causal factors of the problem. We're not just treating the symptoms. And if you just look at the word diagnosis, that's the first step of healing. You've got to make a diagnosis about what's wrong. Uh, dia in Greek is a prefix that means through or by way of, and then the word gnosis in Greek means knowledge. So we're going to get to the solution by way of knowledge, through the knowledge of the causal factors of the problem. Then we can understand how this manifested condition that we've arrived at called the current human condition, which so many people will say we do not want to be present and we want to get out of this current condition of slavery and control, okay? We can't do that unless we have an accurate diagnosis through knowledge of what the causal factors that created that manifested condition actually are. And in a nutshell, the answer to that, the knowledge that we need to understand is are those spiritual laws of the universe, what I simply term natural law. And my working definition for that is the universal non-man-made binding and immutable conditions that govern the consequences of human behavioral choices. So they're universal. That means they're, th these laws exist everywhere in creation. There is nowhere that you can go to escape them. They are in effect and you are bound by them. They're non-man made. They weren't put into effect by any beings in the three-dimensional world in the universe. They were put into effect by the creative force in the universe. Call it God, call it the underlying intelligence behind everything. It doesn't make a difference what you call it. It's the creative energy that ultimately began everything and set the laws of this realm into motion that we call the physical universe. These laws are binding and immutable. That means they're in effect whether we understand them or whether we like that they're in effect or not. And we can do nothing to change that these laws are in effect, just like we can't change the law of gravity or the laws of electromagnetism. They are in effect in the universe and they are always in effect, we are bound by them. We only can understand their workings and then choose whether to align our behaviors to those workings or not. And they, what these laws, these spiritual laws ultimately do is they govern the consequences of our behavioral decisions. When we make a choice that is in keeping with these spiritual laws, Therefore, that behavior is actually a right under this natural law or spiritual law. Then we receive one particular set of results. When we act in opposition to these laws, and therefore we are acting immorally, and we are not taking behaviors that are our right to, to take, we receive a completely different set of results. It's very, very simple. I simply call the, this the laws that govern whether a society is free or not, the law of freedom. Freedom and morality are directly proportional to each other. As morality increases in any given society, the freedom of that 
society will also increase. As morality in any given society declines or goes on the wane, then the freedom of that society will also decline, and it, that society will go ever more toward tyranny and enslavement. True wow. freedom can never exist in a society that embraces the concept or the ideology of moral relativism. This is the main problem that is driving our society into tyranny and slavery. Moral relativism, again, is the idea that there is no inherent and objective difference between right or wrong behavior. So humanity may be the arbiters of that. We can decide what right and wrong or, or decide for ourselves through our whims, our likes, our preferences, what right and wrong are for ourselves, that they're not objective standards of behavior that are set in spiritual law. So the real solution is to understand natural law, the universal spiritual laws that govern the consequences of our behavioral choices, whether we choose morality or immorality. The only way we're ever going to get out of this mess that we've worked ourselves into is to become truly moral beings and to increase morality throughout our entire society. That's when we'll make progress toward true freedom. Yeah, and that's really powerful because you can see that that's what is happening to our society right now. We have become very waning more toward the immoral side, and you see the tyranny is rising. It's kind that's of working right. perfectly into their plan. Well, Mark, thank you so much. We're definitely going to get you back on uh, to decode the matrix and, and other things there um, that are Great. just so interesting. But if you want more information, whatonearthishappening.com. Mark Passio, thank you so much. Leanne, thank you so much for having me on the show today. Stick around because right after this, we will be live in studio for our State of the Union coverage. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. Thank you. 
to destabilize all of Africa, the Middle East, Europe, and the world. He will speak tonight of racial unity. On your agents, Eric Holder and George Soros spent tens of millions of dollars a month causing racial division and hatred in the streets of America. Your collusion with the Republican tyrants in 2014 to pass regulations signing the American people on the trillions more of derivatives is another crime for which you will soon be exposed. You swore to repeal the Patriot Act, but expanded its powers. You signed the NDAA, allowing the secret arrest, torture, and execution of American citizens. And now your operatives in Congress have reintroduced CISPA to censor and control the internet and muzzle free speech. You lied over and over again about the true nature of Obamacare. This increased prices, cut workers' hours, raised their payroll taxes, established death panels, but most importantly, increased the profits of the insurance companies more than 40 plus percent. Yes, you've done a fabulous job. And now you want to increase gas taxes and carbon taxes, but American competitors are exempt and will only ensure more of our jobs are shipped overseas. We have more off-the-record meetings with lobbyists than any president before you, signed more executive orders than any president before you, doubled the national debt when you promised to cut it in half. Everything you said has been a lie. You are a fraud, and by exposing you, we expose those that are behind you who wish to stay anonymous. And finally, you have promoted the disarmament of individuals across the planet and backed tyrannical regimes and their attacks on innocence on a planetary scale. You dare to stand before the people of the world and claim that you represent the common man when everything you've done is to end human liberty and make us nothing more than domesticated slaves. Barack Obama is a tyrant of tyrants, and therefore Anonymous warns this figurehead that no more lies will be accepted, that the fraud is evident, and that the people of the world are awakening and are not intimidated. As Edward Snowden recently warned, the information that he and others will soon release will bring down corrupt Western governments. Through Anonymous is peaceful and not violent, because the pen is mightier than the sword. We are anonymous, we are legion, and the state of the union is a fraud. Welcome to live coverage of the InfoWars nightly news of Obama's 2015 State of the Union. Now, you just heard the pre-buttal from Anonymous, a little bit better than a rebuttal from Joni Ernst. But uh, we're going to be talking about what Obama is talking about. And as we just heard, this is nothing but a fraud. Of course, the mainstream media is talking about Obama doing his Robin Hood turn. Actually, Obama is the King John, and he's going to be talking to the House of Lords. And these people have made themselves just as much of a ceremonial anachronism as the House of Lords truly is. So I've got with us in the studio here, we've got Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson. Joe Biggs is going to be joining us as well to respond to what Obama is going to be talking about. And of course, from what we've learned in the preceding week, we know that he's going to be talking about a lot of different things, primarily about taxes, about free college education, which is not going to be free. He's also going to be talking about uh, trade and a lot of news about the internet, trying to exert control, financial control over the internet. What are you guys uh, looking for tonight? 
My favorite part of the State of the Union is the Skeksy Parade, when all the Skeksies come out and they <laughs> clap for each other and they just clap and revel in their evilness. That's, it's just an extended clap fest. Well, I'm <laughs> looking forward to hearing him talk oh, about- There's Lindsey the, Graham. Uh, the, uh, your best buddy, <laughs> Lindsey Graham. Right next to John McCain, where they always, you can't separate those two guys. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, Jimmy. no, just uh, <laughs> hear, hear him talk about the war on terrorism, uh, how he plans to combat that while continuing to Pay, uh, to fund our opposition overseas, and also hear about how he plans to help the economy. You know, we've seen a lot of things, banker bailouts. Now he's talking about the free college tuition. As we know, nothing is free. Somebody has to pay for it. So who is this going to be? I'm interested to see who that's going uh, to end up being. Well, and of course, normally this would be even more irrelevant because Obama is operating against uh, a Congress that is controlled by the other party. Except that Obama is increasingly talking about how he really doesn't care about Congress. And of course, mm -hmm. they're not going to take any power back. They're not going to try to use any checks or balances against Obama as they have a duty to under the Constitution. No, instead, they're simply going to be passing the checks around. Whether it's passing the checks out to the bureaucracy that does whatever it wishes and writes most of the laws, calling them regulations, or whether it's passing out the checks to his corporate sponsors, or as he's done in the past, passing out checks to his own members on the House floor as they're coming up for a vote on something that affects the people that are writing those checks that Boehner is passing out. Remember that? Can we get that clip? It's the you guys tobacco have that clip lobbyists. Ready? Yeah, the tobacco lobbyists. That's a great clip, a great find. Uh, yeah, while we're waiting for them out. to uh, come in, and he's going to be fashionably late, uh, can we play that clip? Have you guys got that clip up? Okay, all right. We're going to get to that clip in a minute. Now, we were talking about how there's been a lot of trumpeting about how there's going to be a massive uh, tax change, and this tax is what they're talking about with him playing Robin Hood. He's talking about doing $320 billion worth of taxes. And of course, it's kind of hard to get your head around numbers that are that large. So to give you an idea of what that amounts to, there's 84% of the countries in the world that have economies, the entire gross domestic product is that amount or less. $320 billion. That's how much social engineering Obama is proposing. And of course, this is more of a State of the Union in terms of revealing his plans and what really might happen than we've seen in the past. Because again, he's going to make it happen with his executive orders. He talked about after the election, he really didn't care that the Congress had a majority of Republicans because he was going to push his climate agenda through. Mm -hmm. With his executive orders, and with the permanent entrenched bureaucracy, like the EPA in this case, he doesn't have to go to elected representatives. And as far as he's concerned, it's absolutely irrelevant what you, the people, chose in the last election. And of course, we know the elections themselves are notoriously rigged. But even with that, he could care less. He's going to do whatever he wishes. And it's going to be interesting to see how the president addresses Congress when this largely Republican majority was elected based on a referendum against his agenda. Oh, here he comes. Oh, here we go, the Skeksy Parade. Right. Oh, I love you know. how they set this up. It's like, you know, when you watch a boxing match and they come through the tunnel and all the fans are on both <laughs> sides and they're slapping hands with the fans. That's what this reminds me of. <laughs> Except, Jakari, there's no opposition. Well, yeah. There isn't a boxing match. Well, the, the American people, that's the opposition. <laughs> oh, man. Here yeah. comes the turtle. Yeah, Boehner's his sparring partner. They're really working for the same guys. <laughs> oh, goodness. They're like, here you go, guys. Make us proud. We paid you a lot of money. <laughs> so it's quite the crowd. Uh, we'll see what he has to say. Uh, I just expect more lip service. More broken promises. One of the things he's been telling people is that he's going to give two years of free college. Except he's got a lot of details that have been leaked about how he's going to change student loans, how he's going to set up pay as you earn. And of course, one might ask the question, well, if it truly is free college, why do we need student loans? If you read the details, oh, good he's talking about 75, up to 75% of your tuition at junior college. So everything about this is a lie from the get-go. And if they want to talk about Robin Hood, we need to understand that Robin Hood took money from the rich and gave it to the poor. The people that are taking the money, the King Johns, the... Uh, uh, the sheriff of Nottingham. These are the guys that Robin Hood. But this is fighting isn't even the right. the super rich of these targeting. He's targeting the I guess you would call them upper middle class. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's that's the middle class is going to be saddled with the sixty billion dollar free tuition bill.
So and they have leaked a lot of details of this. reason we know a lot of what's going on with the, the details of the tax plan is because he's been leaking this for the last week, uh, putting this out on social media. But again, couching it in terms that are favorable to him, couching mm -hmm. it in terms that are actually lies, saying that I'm going to give you free tuition when in actuality, at most, it's going to be 75%. They're going to set this up to uh, take this out as withholding from your paycheck if you get a job. And of course, you're going to be paying for this. We'll talk about this. We're going to analyze the implications of this. But of course, Obama wants to uh, open up our colleges to illegal immigrants. That's been one of the big thrusts, of course, with the Dreamers. People who are 31 years uh, old or less can come here and get free education. They can get in-state tuition anywhere in the country, unlike uh, American citizens. And of course, if they're going to set up free college for two years, or even 75% of it for two years, guess who's going to be paying for that forever? American citizens will be paying for that. That's right. This is part of expanding Cloward and Piven, opening up the borders, bringing in people to consume education. And of course, the last time we heard that he was going to make something affordable was with Obamacare. Mm -hmm. How did right. that turn out? The Affordable yeah, Care Act. We're all going to find <laughs> out here soon when we pay our taxes. That's I think right. a lot of people are going to be really surprised to see you know, how much they like those plans they didn't get to keep. And how he talked about the, uh, the taxes would not increase, you know, and across the board taxes increased. One of the things that's buried in this, the details, is that he is going to require employers with 10 or more employees, he's going to require them to set up individual retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. Now, the last time he did this, making health insurance affordable, that was initially called a mandate, and then very quickly they called it a tax to get it to pass the Supreme Court. Of course, it is a tax. Of course, it is income redistribution. He was playing Robin Hood with affordable health care, except that he was robbing the American people and giving it to the insurance companies and the banks. And that's what they've been doing all along. Yeah, and we talked about that earlier, how the, the savings, pl retirement plans are the first things to go. The pensions are the first, you know, place where they dip their hands in the pockets of pensions. So, Who's to Absolutely say what's right. going to happen with the compounding interest in an IRA that your employers are mandated to give you? Absolutely. And one of the first things he's going to do is take away education IRAs. That's part of this plan as well. So he talks about free education. That's free education if you're going to be dependent on Washington. If you wanted to set aside money in a 509 plan, he's going to take that away from you. Privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you My exact same speech from last year. <laughs> There you go. The speechwriters have such an easy job when it comes to the State of the Union. They just recycle it year after year. Pretty much, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, my fellow Americans. We are 15 years into this new century, 15 years that dawned with terror touching our shores, oh. that unfolded with a new generation fighting two long and costly wars, Ooh, terror. that saw a vicious sentence. recession spread across <laughs> our nation and the world. It has been and still is a hard time for many. But tonight, we turn the page. <laughs> Tonight, after a breakthrough year for America, our economy is growing and creating jobs at the fastest pace since 1999. Many of those government yeah, right. jobs. And low income, that you gotta get three of them to feed your family yeah. and get food stamps. Part-time <laughs> jobs. People have to have more jobs because they're losing their full-time jobs because the employers can't afford mm -hmm. to Big pay for the Obamacare. Walmart mandate. and other right. employers as well. And now think with this new mandatory IRA, how many small businesses are going to be also be pushed out. I oh, can't, yeah. Can't do that. Our employment rate is now lower than it was before the financial crisis. More of our kids are graduating than ever before. That's a lie. <laughs> yeah, well, even if the kids are graduating, they don't have jobs to go to. Well, well when they talk about it. They're making the parents work 10 times longer, which means the kids are neglected and stuck in this school system that is completely horrible. That's right. When they talk about unemployment, Still they're very uh, careful about how they define that. They don't the count. Gallery. As we've yeah. been in almost 30 years. 
I mean, can the guys say two sentences before they start clapping again? They're like, it lies, lies. They eat it up every year. <laughs> For the first time since 9-11, our combat mission in Afghanistan is over. <laughs> Oh, remember it happened last time they applied. Now we can sell the drugs freely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Six years ago, nearly 180,000 American troops served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now we're sending them somewhere else. Today, fewer than 15,000 remain. And we salute the courage and sacrifice of every man and woman in this 9-11 generation who has served to keep us safe. Mm, except for the American sniper. They didn't, they didn't like that too much. I mean, I have no issue with the troops. It's the missions that they send these guys on. Calls it the 9-11 generation. What does it call it? The surveillance state generation. Yeah, and then we have uh, one of his, his invited guests was uh, the Marine that was stuck in Mexico for all that time. He's taking credit for that. He didn't do anything to get that guy. No, he didn't. He didn't. No, he did not. He's going to go ahead and scoop that up as a victory for his administration. America, for all that we have endured, for all the grit and hard work required to come back, for all the tasks that lie ahead, know this. The shadow of crisis has passed, and the state of the Union is strong. If you're going to talk the about shadow a shadow of crisis has yeah. passed. Talk about what? the shadow government that uh, <laughs> spies on us from the dark. sounds like the subtitle of a Black Ops video game, The Shadow of Crisis Has Passed. <laughs> At this moment, I think the we're growing eclipsed. economy, shrinking deficits. Shrinking deficits? Bustling industry. <laughs> He knows <laughs> energy production. No one really. <laughs> we have risen from recession freer to our own saying. future than any other nation on earth. Booming ener energy production as the Saudis oh, are shutting down domestic energy. Yeah, he's, he's talking about overseas. Oh, the, the, the Chinese that are and for decades to setting come. up solar farms on our. Well, we accept an economy farm. where only a few of us do spectacularly well. Or will we commit ourselves to an economy that generates rising incomes and chances for everyone who makes the effort? <laughs> Notice how he posed that. Will we do A or B? Probably A. <laughs> will we approach the world fearful and reactive, dragged into costly conflicts that strain our military and set back our standing? We got dragged that into those conflicts. That he keeps pushing them into. <laughs> using all elements of our power to defeat new threats and protect our planet? Will we allow ourselves to be sorted into factions and turned against one another? <laughs> or will we recapture the sense of common purpose that has always propelled America forward? If you don't, he'll veto. In two weeks, I will send this Congress a budget filled with ideas that are practical, not oh, partisan. Here we go. <laughs> and in the months ahead, I'll crisscross the country making a case for those ideas. <gasps> Really? So tonight, I want to focus less on a checklist of proposals and focus more on the values at stake in the choices before us. It begins with our economy. So he's got a pen, a phone, and a car. Seven years ago, Air Force One. <laughs> Rebecca and Ben Erler of Minneapolis were newlyweds. Here we go. Multimedia. <laughs> She waited tables. He worked construction. Their first child, Jack, was on the way. <sighs> they were young and in love in America. And it doesn't get much better than that. If only we had known, Rebecca wrote to me last spring, what was about to happen to the housing and construction market. As the crisis worsened, Ben's business dried up. So he took what jobs he could find, even if they kept him on the road for long stretches of time. Rebecca took out student loans and enrolled in community college and retrained for a new career. They sacrificed for each other. And slowly it paid off. They bought their first home. They had a second son, Henry. Rebecca got a better job and then a raise. Ben's back in construction and home for dinner every night. It is amazing, Rebecca wrote, what you can bounce back from when you have to. We are a strong, tight-knit family who has made it through some very, very hard times. 
We are a strong, tight-knit family who has made it through some very, very hard times. America, Rebecca and Ben's story is our story. They represent the millions who worked hard and scrimped and sacrificed and retooled. And survived in spite of the, what the government that I and ran banks for have done to them. Yeah. You are the people I was thinking of six years ago today <laughs> in the darkest months of the crisis when I stood on the steps of this Capitol and promised we would rebuild our economy on a new foundation. And it has been your resilience, your effort, that has made it possible for our country to emerge stronger. Well, we didn't build that. Yeah. We believed we could Very reverse tone, the tide of outsourcing. And the American and auto industry was on the short. brink of collapse until we sold it and to Italy. Yeah. For pennies on the dollar. Created yeah. More than 11 million new jobs. <laughs> and like I said before, a lot of these are government jobs. Yes. And the way they define unemployment, they exclude people who have been unemployed for a period of time. On no, stop looking. And mm -hmm. protect our planet. And today, America is number one in oil and gas. No thanks to you. America is number <laughs> one in wind power. Every three weeks, and you're we sitting there celebrating this as the Saudis have just collapsed in a domestic production. You're going to see that. Lower gas prices. You're going to see that graph go exactly the opposite direction. A family this year should save about seven hundred fifty dollars at the pump. Don't worry, they're going to add that back in taxes, and you'll hardly yeah. even notice yeah, it. I believe that. Be taxes and also, when you talk about the these solar farms, I think solar is a great technology, but you know, you have uh, the, the environmentalists are saying it's so great, but then birds fly over and they get burned up. Right. All those streamers, I believe. Our high school graduation rate has hit an all time high. More but not our literacy rate. See, so you can cherry before. pick. <laughs> What you want for stats. Yeah, it will, we'll get them through, but we don't prepare them for what's up ahead. Right. We believe that sensible regulations could prevent another crisis, shield families from ruin, and encourage fair competition. <laughs> Today, we have new tools to stop taxpayer-funded bailouts. Oh, and wait, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> you just put the taxpayer on the hook for all the derivatives of the banks. You just gutted this. You just gutted the oil industry. That was domestic, and so, uh, I mean, it's, this is just yeah, amazing. Like 1.3 trillion, we're on the hook. This for. Uh, lackluster Affordable Care Act, where you go, yeah. to, you go to the kiosk or you go to the uh, the VA Watson thing that Biggs just did that report about, and then they, they pretty much give you some uh, silly diagnosis. At every step, we just had an article today on Infowars.com. H and R Block said, "We don't understand." Obamacare is hopelessly complex from a tax standpoint. People don't realize they're going to be paying 1% of their income if they didn't sign up for the inflated insurance that they mandated. Yeah, it's not $95 unless you make less than nine grand. So you can always pick it. You can say, well, relative to this, the deficit is down, ignoring the fact that it has skyrocketed in absolute terms, and that they waited until the very last day of the fiscal year to show how much it had skyrocketed. Hey, he's blank. <laughs> so, so, so the verdict is clear. Middle class economics works. Expanding opportunity works. I had no. That's policies why will we don't do it. As long as politics don't get in the way. <clears throat> oh, they say this every year. We can't year. slow down businesses or put our economy at risk with government shutdowns or fiscal showdowns. We can't put the security of families at risk by taking away their health insurance. I like when he's talking about these uh, government shutdowns and these sequesters and all that stuff. But I remember he was threatening not to pay the military. Uh, it was last year, the year before, and then... He didn't want to have the White House tours. They didn't have money for that. But of course, they had money to go on vacation. There's this article we had earlier today. No one can understand the new Obamacare tax code. Yeah. H&R Block, CEO. Didn't have money for schools, but yeah, we had thousands of dollars to pay for all of the flood of illegal immigrants that came to the country. Mm -hmm. Today, thanks to a growing economy, the recovery is touching more and more lives. Yes, it is. Is he going to talk about Ebola? Is he going to talk about the... Uh, <laughs> A lot of you know, illegal most immigrants. Small business owners plan to raise their employees' pay than at any time since 2007. Probably not. 
So you're not going to get Here's a wage increase if the employer has to pay Those extra tonight, health insurance costs, extra retirement than just making sure plan costs. Screw things up. The government or are you going to have fewer people working? We're making. You know about the government. You are the you government. Do more than just do right. no harm. Tonight, together, let's do more to restore the link between hard work and growing opportunity for every American. If you look at the details of the tax plan, he's doing exactly the opposite. What he's going to do is going to drastically affect small businesses, farmers. Because it's going to be a big boon Rebecca's to large corporations. And of course, one of the things he's pushing, and we'll probably get through with the Republicans, is the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Mm -hmm. They both want that desperately. Yeah, he's been and We're going to really talk about that after that. the speech. Yeah. And to give him the fast-track authority. Friday night pizza, that's a big splurge. <laughs> Basic child care for Jack and Henry costs more than their mortgage and almost as much as a year at the University of Minnesota. And nearly as much as their health care. <laughs> like millions of hardworking Americans. <laughs> health insurance. Rebecca isn't asking for a handout, but she is asking that we look for more ways to help families get ahead. And in fact, at every moment of economic change throughout our history, this country has taken bold action to adapt to new circumstances and to make sure everyone gets a fair shot. We set up worker protections, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, to protect ourselves from the harshest adversity. And we make it available to anyone on the we planet who wants to come schools here. Schools and colleges, right. <laughs> infrastructure, and the internet. <coughs> Tools they he needed wants to, regulate. to go as far as their <laughs> efforts and their dreams will take them. That's what middle class economics is. The idea that this country does best when everyone gets their fair shot. Everyone does their fair share. Everyone plays by the same set of rules. Except his banker yeah. buddies. Yeah, yeah, except his millionaire politician buddies. What rules does he play by? He doesn't follow the Constitution. He doesn't follow the written laws. What does he play by? What rules? We want everyone to contribute to our success. <laughs> exactly. That's true. He didn't. He wants all of us to contribute to their success. Mm -hmm. That's... What does middle class economics require in our time? First, middle class economics means helping working families feel more secure in a world of constant change. That means helping folks afford childcare, college, Give your kids to us. A home. We'll take care of them. Retirement. Why don't you lower our taxes? My budget will address each of these issues. He Lowering says he's going to do that. the taxes of working families and putting <laughs> thousands <you> <laughs> of dollars back into their pockets each year. Except he's going to tax the education IRAs that people have been planning for their children's education for a long time, that's a betrayal. And they're going to come after your pension plans as well as Social Security. Right. And he doesn't point out how they've got tax loopholes that are giving all of these credits to illegal immigrants that aren't even here paying taxes. And yes. Child care. Billions of dollars. In today's economy, when having both parents in the workforce is an economic necessity for many families. Why is that? We need yeah, increased tax to that child way. care more than ever. The reality is... They need state care more than ever. <laughs> in the 1950s, a median family of four paid 1% to 2% in federal income taxes. Mm -hmm. Now they're paying about 25 to 30%, which is what the second wage earner, typically the mom, if she's working, makes. So they put the mother to work to pay the increased taxes. And then he says, don't worry, if you do everything we tell you, we'll give you some child care credits. Yeah, it's like right. that uh, movie re review you did, David, of It's a Wonderful Life. And I believe the guy got offered $30,000, and yeah. his boss like, you're going to be one of the richest guys in town. That's right. It's not like that anymore. That's right. <laughs> and that's where, Jakari, that's where he's going to get everybody on these increased uh, estate taxes, mm -hmm. because he's going to tax people on quote-unquote capital gains, which is really the devaluation of the dollar. You mm -hmm. bought a house 40 years ago for $20,000, now it's worth $250,000. It's still a 40-year-old house. Right. Yep. But they're going to pretend that that devaluation of the currency is actually an appreciated asset. And that goes especially true for uh, farms and for uh, small businesses. Here's another example. Uh, today, we are the only advanced country on Earth that doesn't guarantee paid sick leave or paid maternity leave to our workers. 43 million workers have Every no Every one of those countries million. he had up there 
as a gross domestic product smaller than his tax increase. That forces too many parents to make the gut-wrenching choice between a paycheck and a sick kid at home. So I'll be taking new action to help states adopt paid leave laws of their own. And since paid sick leave won where it was on the ballot last November, let's put it to a vote right here in Washington. Send me a bill that gives every worker in America the opportunity to earn seven days of paid sick leave. That's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Of course, Sick Nothing. because they're going to be, no they know they're going to be sick, so they're going to be forced to take the flu shots. No wonder he's going to give them the time <laughs> off. Come on now. <laughs> Good point. Then, Jake. Sure take the flu shot, get seven days off paid. Yeah. Two. Get your name, Scott. And I pointed out in a report I did earlier this or last this year how the White House is really guilty of this and especially a lot of uh, democrats <laughs> paying their to make female sure workers less the overtime they've earned. very hypocritical and and everyone in this congress who still refuses to raise the minimum wage i say this if you truly believe you could work full-time and support a family on less than fifteen thousand dollars a year try it <laughs> if not vote to give millions of the hardest working people didn't we have that article yesterday, the inflation, and says you don't have to worry about inflation unless you buy a house or you just generally right. live life. Mm -hmm. McDonald's is meant to be a, a starter point. A, a stepping to stone. Get your, yeah, a stepping yeah. stone to get your foot in the door, not a long-term career. Come on, people. Yeah, my first job, I made less than $6 an hour. It's not the job of government. Mm -hmm. To give working families a fair shot, we still need more employers to see beyond next quarter's earnings and recognize. I never told you all my McDonald's story. I think you told when us. But I went that. from 425 to 426 an hour. That penny. <laughs> That's how much the, the penny raised. Yeah. yeah. Very proud of you all know? the hard. It's the thought that counts. The penny earned. Yeah. yeah. It's the <laughs> thought that counts. They they really wanted you to know how much they appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, pretty well, much. that was probably a lot of money back then. <laughs> hey, how old do you think do it? If I told you what my first job paid, you'd know how old I was. Yeah. <laughs> Things like lower mortgage premiums and a higher minimum wage. These ideas will make a meaningful difference in the lives of But the thing about if you raise this minimum wage, a lot of employers are going to have to cut back the hours of their employees. And that's what all of raise the price of their goods. And that's the problem with everything that is mandated from a central location. They don't allow people to have the flexibility to work out things, and, and it's just uh, it, it has unintended consequences across the board. We have to do more to help Americans upgrade their skills. And let's talk about that. I mean, community college it's pretty much a joke unless you get a technical skill yeah because I mean I my first two years I went community college and they got my credits got completely wiped out when I went to University of Texas mm -hmm. like eh, this is the settled. ultimate this is the ultimate lie though to say that we are going to uh, uh, give free college when they're only at max going to give 75 percent and then at the well, same time they free. do this with one hand they hand you this with the other hand, they take away the money that middle class families, poor families have been setting aside to educate their children because they want to punish the people who save, who are self-reliant, who work hard, who plan ahead for the future. They want everyone to be dependent on the government, not on their families, not on themselves. Well, they That's want them the to be so far in debt that the parents have to work overtime each. That's right. Thus taking their focus away from their kids, not being able to educate, uh, educate the kids, and then those kids are forced to use this common core. And yeah. then we have a whole generation mm -hmm. See, of slow people coming in. This graphic here is a lie. Lower the cost of community college to zero. If you read it, he's proposing 75% they pay. So that's not zero. Well, you first notice, of all, notice they always say it's free, just like uh, yeah. at first Obamacare was free, then it became the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Now it's going to be free college tuition, and then when he gets called on in a year or so from now, it's going to be affordable college tuition. <laughs> and it's really a tax on David, your you don't understand IRAs. fuzzy math. I'm sorry. <laughs> 75% is zero. It just depends on how you think about it. <laughs> you got Common just, cold. Just got to round it up, right? <laughs> it's just like NASA and NOAA said it was the hottest year on record, and then they were like, well, 38%. We're 38% sure of that. Well, yeah, well, Science. cherry pick points across the globe that were hotter. All right.
Now, in his plan, right now he's saying 9 million students, $3,800 per year. And the plan, it says a max of $2,500 per year. Wow. It also says a max of 75%. So in some of their stuff, they have $3,800 per year. and others, they have uh, $2,500 per year. So did but you it's not going to lower it? the cost. It's not going to lower the cost to get everybody in community college, just like it doesn't lower the, hasn't lowered the cost to have more people go to college. It's actually made colleges more expensive as they've got unlimited budgets. They charge people more for their tuition. They go up right. in the tuition. Well, and especially, you know, I think it's uh, on his part for what he's trying to do. It's a good investment because you get them to go to the community college. And then when they go to the university and they're paying those astronomical rates yes. for the most simplistic classes, now you get them into debt. That's right. For joke degrees that they can't even get a job for. Asking more businesses to follow the lead of companies like CVS and UPS. <laughs> and offer more educational benefits and paid apprenticeships. Opportunities that give workers the chance to earn higher paying jobs, even if they don't have a higher education. And as a new generation of veterans comes <laughs> home, we owe them every opportunity to live the American dream they helped defend. Oh, yeah, yeah except when they arrest <laughs> veterans for uh, owning guns and, you know, they arrest Grisham for walking down the street with his kid with his rifle on his back. But you They would have put a robot in charge to run the VA health care system. Yeah, come on, guys. They, they love the, uh, they love come the veterans. Oh, they're patting, they're patting themselves on the And then they, the they teach DHS that returning veterans are the threat, the and, you know, but they love you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Jill. Has helped nearly 700,000 veterans and military spouses get a new job. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> what do you oh. think about that, Big? Tell us about how you've been treated as a veteran. How long have you had to wait at the VA? Wow. <laughs> Years? You know, I went into the doctor to have my foot looked at, and when I showed up, apparently the doctor says that I have a broken ankle. You know, so I had to jump up and down and show this guy that my <laughs> ankle clearly wasn't broken. <laughs> I mean, these guys have no idea the VA healthcare system is failing, and they want to bring in robots now to take it over. I mean, this is out of control. You don't know how close you came to having your leg amputated, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah imagine waking up and not having a right leg. I'd have been horrible. <laughs> Wait a minute. Was it right or left? <laughs> Was it this guy or that guy? It was my right leg that is supposedly broken, but I'd probably wake up with my left one taken off. <laughs> 2010, America has put more people back to work than Europe, Japan, and all advanced economies combined. The bad news is... Having some issues. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the bad news is the entire globe is in economic decline. That's why you see the commodities crashing. Like our auto industry... That's why even cheap oil is auto industry back. that we're moving overseas. Yeah. ...that didn't even exist 10 or 20 years ago. Jobs of companies like Google and eBay and Tesla... That pays zero taxes. So no one knows yeah, that pays zero industry taxes. Industry That's right, dude. The jobs of the future. But we do know we <laughs> want them here in America. We know that. Paying no we're taxes paying, here in America. Paying to ship <laughs> we need industries them here so overseas. They can spy on us. Yeah. It's yeah, a the, total sham. Look at it. Dog and Pony show. Yeah. Right. Trans Pacific Partnership. And these new cyber crimes and cyber controls, internet controls, this is what's really dangerous. And he's going to get that through because the Republicans want it even more badly than he does. 21st century businesses need 21st century infrastructure. Here we go. ports and stronger bridges. Faster, faster broadband. Faster trains. Yeah. And the fastest internet. Yeah, that you're going to regulate. Democrats and Republicans. Yeah. Yeah, we need faster internet. Fastest internet because <laughs> nobody's going to be able to use it because it's so taxed and regulated. Well, we need faster internet because they're using so much of our bandwidth to spy on us. Right. Yeah, you got chargers you put in the wall that spy on you. Yeah. You've got your cell phones. You've mm -hmm. got everything. Facebook, everything is spying on us right now. Yeah. Well, you think about it. It's a significant amount of your bandwidth is being lost to the NSA. And so they want faster bandwidth universally so they can collect more data on us. Including small businesses need to sell more American products overseas. Today our business yeah, is White House more than ever. Internet rules to be and implemented without Congress. Workers workers. Here we go. Trans-Pacific Partnership. But as we speak, China wants to write the rules for the world's fastest growing region. That would put our workers and our businesses at a disadvantage. Why would we let that happen?
We're going to let the corporations write the we rules. We should write both rules. <laughs> yeah. And, and by secret. we, he means none of you because you don't yeah. get to see it. <laughs> Only six. I don't think she realizes she's on camera. With strong new trade deals from Asia to Europe that aren't just free but are also fair. Why are okay. all these people clapping? They don't even these know These agreements are being done in secret with corporate lobbyists. Not even these elected puppets can see what the agreements are. It's going to bring parity with these corporations to uh, governments, and it's going to go far beyond trade. They decide everything in the international tribunal, so yeah. your country's laws don't matter, your courts that's don't matter. Why we've gone after countries that break the rules at our expense. <laughs> but 95% of the world's customers live outside <laughs> our borders. You know, you see it right there. We can't close yeah. ourselves off from those opportunities. Tell us what's in it. If it's so good, you shouldn't have to hide it until the last minute. Fast track means that nobody gets to see it. Nobody gets to change it. He wants to sign it before the Congress, and the Congress is this useless vestige that isn't going to do anything. Wait, isn't this the same man that said he was going to be transparent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Transparently right. crooked. What happened to that? He wanted to no. set up all crooked. of these online things where we could see what the lobbyists are spending. And transparent behind a very dark wall. Yeah. I think he's been very transparent about his tyranny. Well, he shows you footage from his vacations. Maybe that's like, it's kind of like a reality show, kind of transparent. Come watch me play golf or shows you you know, how hang bad out with, he is you know, the basketball. celebrities and all that. Has reversed a disease once thought unstoppable. So tonight <laughs> I'm launching a new precision medicine initiative to bring us closer to curing diseases like cancer. Big pharmaceutical companies, big agra, Hollywood entertainment industry is writing copyright rules and regulations that are gonna be forced on the rest of the globe along with their cyber internet controls, with their cyber crimes legislation. This is something that everybody globally should be concerned about. But of course, in the other countries, their elected representatives are not allowed to see what the corporations are negotiating with their lobbyists in secret. The free and open internet. To every classroom and every- Your data is free and open. To yeah. them, <laughs> to the NSA. Yeah. That's right. yeah, it's free and open to them, so they can openly spy on you and take yeah. it and use it against openly you. Openly and freely. <laughs> I want Americans to win the race for the kinds of discoveries that unleash new jobs. Oh, that's why you're gonna Converting sunlight into liquid fuel. NASA. DARPA, there you go. There yeah, there's, DARPA. There's, yeah, he wants <laughs> Americans to- Rise the robots, it's A-OK, -okay, yeah, right there. Yeah. The AI. Well, he's got that $100 million <laughs> brain initiative. Don't forget about that. That's right. <laughs> what was the movie where they were, all the humans were programming the computers and that was their job. And the when they got sad, they get pills. Space program <laughs> that will that's what we're needed for. Tomorrow. Clean the machine. Is it divergent? To prepare us for those missions, Scott Kelly will begin a year-long stay in space. So Ooh, good me? luck, Captain. <laughs> Make sure to Instagram it. We're proud of it. Yay. Come said an Instagram. on. He has been so tough on NASA. Yeah. <laughs> I thought NASA's first they responsibility like was reaching out to the Muslim hey guys, community. I just looked. That's what he Bulgaria said before. and Romania have faster internet than the United States. Right. That's Bulgaria. Ours wow. is ridiculous. ridiculously slow. <laughs> when it comes to issues like infrastructure and basic research, I know there's bipartisan support in this chamber. <laughs> <laughs> Romania. Romania. Wow. That's because the guy with the computer well, we on the <laughs> is direct <laughs> Isn't that where uh, Goose, uh, Goosefer is? Yeah, it's where Goosefer was, yeah. <laughs> That's how he's able to hack all those guys. That's like yeah. fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he said we don't mind paying our fair share of taxes that he continues to raise. Lobbyists have right. rigged the tax He means they don't mind paying their fair Some share. corporations <laughs> pay nothing, while others pay for... He's talking about lobbyists. Did, did, didn't this happen under your the administration? ...giveaways that the super-rich don't need... <laughs> while denying a break to middle-class families who do. Yeah, what was the statistic that just came out? This year that we have an opportunity to... During his that. administration, the top 1%, now they own even more than 60%. Yeah. Yeah. That all happened during his administration. And he says the same thing every then single year. Then why are you year. moving industry overseas? It's so frustrating if people say, do we even need a State of the Union? I mean, he, it's all lies, but honestly, you want to watch it to see what they're not going to do. <laughs> Here's how we're going to lie to you for the next couple of years. I think it is useful as just a catalog of all the stuff, the broken promises. Mm -hmm. So you can at least go back and say, when he said, well, I didn't say that uh, Syria violated the red line, or I didn't say that it was free or whatever, you can go back and show him. Yeah, you did. 
it oh well you know my teleprompter told me to say that yeah well, i think it's interesting to see how they can't even keep their lives straight they don't have a good enough memory to lie consistently about free education for example honestly, I, honestly david i don't think they care they no. don't expect you to pay attention they think you're watching reality shows or sports or whatever else and i mean if that's your entertainment that's fine but there's plenty of real stuff going on not so much here but there are real things going on in the world I wonder what did we ever find out who the uh, who's the the last man standing? What is that called? Oh, the designated survivor. Yes. Yes. One of the cabinet Obama members on trust fund loophole could increase tax advantage on trust or of trust. Yeah. Yeah. They're trying to pretend that this is something that's going to affect the trust funds of people like Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. It's not. When they go after the 509 education IRAs, they're going after people who on average have $20,000 that they've set aside for their children's education. And they're going to tax those poor people. They're going to do the ex post factos, okay? After these people have been lied to by these, these guys, have made their plans, have saved money after they paid taxes, now he's gonna come back and renege on those promises and take that money away. See, when you can't plan for the future, you become totally dependent on the government and that's really the plan. Right. Driving everybody into dependency. And it'll be the people who can't figure out the tax code, people like myself who you know go through H&R Block or something like that, where they openly say, we have no idea how we're gonna help you with your taxes this year because we don't understand. Well, the IRS says that when you call them, they say they can't you can't rely on their advice to uh, to solve anything. And one of the things I like about this article there is that sign there that says we understand the, we understand the tax code. Right? No tax return to We can understand right? everything, and yet the CEO says, no, we don't know what it is. Yeah. We haven't a clue. So. When we leverage our power with coalition building, when we don't let our fears... Like the ISIS coalition. The, yeah. <laughs> the ISIS coalition. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what we're doing right now. And around the globe, it is making a difference. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Bunch of uh, burned Christian villages First, from those uh, we stand yeah. ISIS with or in, uh, Al Qaeda rebels. Who've been targeted by That's terrorists right. from a school in Pakistan. After, to exactly right, Jakari. After we went to those we countries, continue. we can point with Throwing pride to the fact mm -hmm. that even though they allowed Christians in these predominantly Muslim, Muslim countries for centuries, after we went there, they've been totally espunged, and now you see the, the, these atrocities being conducted on Christians because of blowback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's by design. At the same time, we've learned some costly lessons over the last 13 years. We don't know what we're Instead doing. Of Americans <laughs> patrolling the valleys of Afghanistan. So keep on funding them. We've trained yeah. their security forces, who've now taken the lead. And we've honored and defected our troops' sacrifice ISIS. by supporting <laughs> that all of our weapons first with them. democratic transition. <laughs> Instead of sending large ground forces overseas, we're partnering with the nations rebels. from South Asia to North Africa. We accidentally dropped supplies off to ISIS <laughs> and yeah, said we, we didn't know anything about it. Yeah, we dropped a box full of grenades <laughs> over there. Wow. In Syria. Mm. Pallet full of grenades. American leadership, including our military power. Is he going to put up that stat about attacks. how many innocent people they killed with their drone strikes? Mm. Oh, I don't think so. I probably won't really have that up really. We are leading Yeah, the I think you made that report, didn't you, do, about all the drone strikes and the kids? Mm. That's a good report. We've got a lot of these drone pilots now that are, <laughs> that are claiming PTSD, so now they want to make these drones fully autonomous so they can take that human emotion away so they can kill more people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And robots don't get carpal tunnel syndrome. Yeah, exactly, so they don't have to worry about <laughs> passing out purple hearts to the drone. <laughs> It will require focus, but we will succeed. Mm -hmm. And tonight I call on this Congress to show the world that we are united there in this go. mission by passing a resolution. Yeah, there you go. More people died with drones than 9-11. We need yes. that authority. And they need to authorize the use of force against ISIS. They're Second. droning degrade and destroy and ISIS. Of America. Arming always. them and training them and giving them weapons and then they're... They always sell these things as surgical strikes, and yet, even by their own statistics, there's far more uh, innocent civilians that are killed than targets of interest. And that's not even to say their targets of interest were valid targets in the first place. Oh, yeah, that, I mean, we're I can vouch for that, that 100%. Yeah, we're never allowed to so question many that. Times, mm -hmm. So many times they kill so many innocent people for no reason, and then mm -hmm. half the time the target that they're going for isn't even in the building. Yes, yeah. right. yes. Or and, then, and then, of course, Joe, was that a valid target in the first place? Who reviews that?
Yeah, exactly. I mean, we don't I know. Mean, we don't even know if the target was even valid to start with, besides yeah. all the innocent people that were there. Yeah, that famous video from WikiLeaks, I believe it was a helicopter shooting down the crowd, and there was a couple of journalists with their cameras. And then the guy pulls up with his kids in the car, and they shoot at the guy and with his kids. And they're like, well, you shouldn't have brought his kids to a war zone. He lives in a freaking war zone. It's not like, you know, he lives in Austin. He can just mm -hmm. drive down I-35 to Houston or something. Right. Now, he, he's bragging about how they're pushing us to the brink of World War III, and of course... He's pushing us to that. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Talking about what he's doing in the Ukraine. Such a success. And of course, that is necessary, and that's the other part of this uh, manipulation of the price of oil. It's not just to get rid of domestic oil production, but it is also to prepare for war because they're concerned about the global economy not coming back. Yeah, now he's talking about Cuba. But he knows the Russians are trying to get friendly with them again, so he wants to swoop in there first. Well, what you're right. doing doesn't work for 50 years. It's time to try something new. Hey, we could apply that test to our own government. <laughs> yeah. About every one of the things that they're their doing. Their government yeah, hasn't changed at all. That. It's just the... <laughs> it removes a phony excuse for restrictions in Cuba. Stands up for democratic waterboarding values. people and not getting any valuable intel for years hasn't stopped him from continuing to do that. Begin the work of ending you know, the could he make that same metric with the war on drugs? Hey, mm -hmm. if it ain't working for 50 years, it's time we stop and do something else. Yeah, yeah. As His Holiness Pope Francis has said, "He's always going to quote the Pope." Mm. Diplomacy is the work of small steps. And these small steps have added up to new hope for the future in Cuba. And after years in prison, we are overjoyed that Alan Gross is back. Again, you're listening along. to our Prison Planet live coverage of the State of the Union. If you're not a Prison Planet subscriber, please consider supporting our operation. We have a special right now, $29.95. That's just $2.50 a month. You can share that now with 20 other friends. It works out just 12 cents a person per month. And it's a way that you can uh, support this operation here, and of course, we have the nightly news every Monday through Friday at 7 Central. And we put out two free streams today, one on uh, Infowars.com forward slash show, and then another one on our YouTube channel. And so if you're watching these on any of those, it's, gr it's a great way to help support what we're doing, get the equipment here, get reporters in the chairs, send reporters out in the field. We do it with all your support. So we really do appreciate it at uh, prisonplanet.tv. And it's a great deal right now. This is the best deal we've ever had for Prison Planet. And I keep all options on the table to prevent a nuclear run. They had the... Uh... They do. They just had the all-seeing eye as part of their monitoring program. There it is, right there in the bottom right hand. Unprecedented transparency. Yeah. <laughs> the all-seeing eye. And monitoring. <laughs> we will the monitor the program. <laughs> we will hijack I guess the that's the NSA is watching them, right? Is that the, Please yeah. step into your health booth. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Up its nuclear program. This again. is Watson. <laughs> and that's why I will veto any new sanctions bill that threatens to undo this progress. Oh, there he's talking about his veto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gonna Wait a minute. Hard, Wasn't hard it just again. recently that we used Stutznet to hack these guys? And right. now we've got to uh, got to protect them. I mean, it just. I mean, he just completely flip flopped. Oceania was our enemy forever, and now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> East Eurasia. We're looking beyond the issues that have consumed us in the past. Yeah, just flip sides. He is definitely the president of no change, that's for sure. No hacker. And we need the hope. To shut down our networks, steal our trade secrets, or invade the privacy of American families. Well, Especially it's not so much kids. these foreign people I'm worried about hacking me, it's the domestic ones. Yes. The NSA and all your merry men. <laughs> Aaron Schwartz pointed that out, that virtually all the hacks were funded and the exploits created by our government for their use. And of course, it was the CFAA, which he is the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which he wants to expand. He wants to uh, change things that were misdemeanors into major felonies and apply the RICO statute. So we're gonna talk about the implications of that when we uh, do some analysis. Oh, so he's gonna, yeah, smartphones, vehicles. You were talking about that last night, I think, yeah, David. Vehicles, uh, yeah, vehicles, Electrical grids. And even back when Clinton was in office, they were warning about putting all of our infrastructure on the internet. Mm -hmm. They said, do not do that, and they did it anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the plan B for when we do have some sort of a solar storm or hackers it's take like, down oops. our infrastructure, our entire Why don't you economy? ask Michael Hastings about being hacked? Yeah. Oh, well, you yeah, can't. Absolutely. Yeah. Africa, our troops, our scientists. We were just watching Jurassic Park again the other night. 
healthcare. And the point they get into the electric vehicles and start going, and they have steering wheels that they can't control. And uh, oh, here comes Travis said, "This is not going to work out good." <laughs> we, we know how this how this movie plays out. We've seen it in Jurassic Park. It's going to happen in real life. We are the number of new Ebola health. cases declining, or are they just hiding the actual cases that are out there? Exactly. Yeah. And the world needs reported to Ebola cases are declining. Effective global effort to prevent the spread of future pandemics. Invest in smart development and eradicate extreme poverty. And exactly what did they do to keep it from spreading? I thought they brought six people, <laughs> six people back here and <laughs> yeah, what, did not what follow quarantine say, procedures. I U.S. led efforts for what, what did that guy say, Biggs? We went to that press conference and he was, he was like, like, I'm just gonna stick okay. my hand in this, yeah, bowl, in this bowl, of bowl of Ebola. And I'm just gonna rub it all in this Ebola. Like, if I don't have a no clutch chance. in my hand, I'm not gonna get it. Zero. <laughs> and then the next There's day, like, zero chance. people started getting sick and falling out dead and all kinds of stuff is is wild. It's not like when you sweat, your pores open up in your hands and. Yeah. Kind of take something in. That's it's not going to happen. That's crazy. Yeah. There's zero chance. I mean, how crazy was it that Ebola was everywhere and then literally stopped? Yeah, being it just fell off the map. overnight. And no thanks to them because they followed no procedure. Uh, now here comes with this. All the protocols. Yep. Now one year doesn't make a trend, but this does. Oh. Now, see, this is the thing. He said he's going to do this without the Congress because he's got the EPA to work with him. He's got his executive orders. He's got the EPA's bureaucratic regulations that they create, which supersede the uh, laws of Congress because Congress isn't doing anything. So this is why some of his stuff this year is really more important than typically because he's not going to follow the usual checks and balances of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, Mark Moreno. Yeah. of Climate Depot, we're talking about one one hundredth of a degree. It's not even, you can't even actually measure it. So and only 38% said that they thought it was heating. Yeah, so what even, my it's well, not even a consensus. Of, yeah, Drudge, a couple of days afterward, they came out and they said, we're really disappointed in how they reported this because it's only 38% accurate. So 60% of the time, it's right. All and the these time. wildfires the are burning U.S. Time. acres because they don't allow people to take care of their land. That's they right. They have all these federal areas set aside that they don't let people set up fire berms. There's all kind of things you could do to take care of your land to mitigate wildfires, but they right. don't let they anybody don't, onto the land. They don't let you take out standing uh, exactly. dead trees. They don't oh, let yeah. you take out falling dead trees. And that's why these areas you like Yellowstone burn so quickly, why Bastrop just outside of Austin burns so quickly. And then they come back after the fact and tell people in the communities, clear out the dead wood that's fallen in your, on your own property, but they won't do it on the lands that they control. That American leadership drives international now, action. This is <laughs> this picture of this woman, this, this young girl trying to breathe. It was just today that we had another revelation of the EPA putting diesel fumes, feeding diesel fumes directly to children. Uh, what was it, 10 to 17 or yeah. something like that? In California, we've already reported on how they did that in North Carolina to adults. They'd selected for people with respiratory and heart conditions, and the EPA gave them levels that were more than 70 times what the EPA said were fatal. They fed that to them. And then, then they were doing it on young But don't put a fire in your fireplace to heat your home. That's right. right. That's damaging to the environment, but we're going to just go ahead and Make people breathe diesel fumes. Yes. And yeah. call it a scientific experiment. That's the example of yeah. our values. As Americans, we respect human dignity even when we're threatened. Oh, boy. Which is why I have Unless you get hit with one of our drones. Sure okay, now hold on. He's talking about torture. <laughs> it was my understanding before he got elected, <laughs> he was going to shut down Guantanamo Bay <laughs> and all these other horrific practices. And now we even have. Diane Feinstein, who I'm not a fan of at all. She's paying lip service to it, but even she's talking about these torture reports now. Mm -hmm. The Obama administration and the Justice Department did everything they could to keep everything that the CIA had done quiet. He is always looking for things to blame on the Bush administration, mm -hmm. but he will cover for everything that the Bush administration did in terms of CIA torture. They did not want any of that to come out, even though we got a highly redacted report. The only reason we got that was because the CIA got Diane Feinstein and her staffers angry because she found out they were spying on her. Yeah, that, that's right. fine when they and spy that, on us, but I think it was like a CBS interview. She's like, a drone was looking at me. I'm like, oh, I'm sure it didn't want to. And it was a little slap <laughs> on the wrist, basically, of the torture report. <laughs> Here you go. Here's a, just a little taste yes. of what they were doing. Yes. Yeah. And then they wrote their own report and said, we exonerate ourselves. Right. Commitment to they had a huge website rolled out the very next day. Suspend. 
$3 million per prisoner to keep open a prison that the world condemns and terrorists use to recruit. We're six years into your administration. Why aren't you closed it down? Responsibly to cut the population. He says it every year. There. He's got that pin. All he's got to do is sign the yeah, paper. You got your pin in your clothes. phone. That's right. You know, Air Force One. Do Use something, your phone. Guy. You got Use the pen, pen and paper. Let's he's go. He's been treating prisoners for. Yeah. It's it, you know, it's it's still Bush's right. fault. You know, apparently this late, you know, second term, it's still Bush's fault that Guantanamo Bay is up and running. We we gotta close it. I'm and just gonna keep on releasing all these. I'm gonna say that every guys. year that it needs to be closed and not close it. Six we years in, still using that. If we want maximum cooperation from other countries and industry in our fight against terrorist networks. So while some Except have moved on from the fought. debates over our surveillance programs, I have not. <laughs> As promised, our intelligence agencies have worked hard with the recommendations of privacy advocates to increase transparency. <laughs> and build yes, wow, they, they nice have the recommendations of privacy advocates <laughs> that they have completely ignored. <laughs> safe while strengthening privacy. How are you strengthening privacy? <laughs> Looking for themselves. The we put whistleblowers in jail. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, sure we they make privacy they mean government about what privacy. they're doing okay, yeah, a I'm lot more strong. What they do is they just spy on us. Yeah. To meet new challenges and, and convince us we don't I'm need from the government. Don't ask me any questions. Mm -hmm. This is the part where he's going to pretend that they're going to put restrictions on corporations sharing your data. When in reality, he's pushing for the Cyber Intelligence Sharing Protection Act again, CISPA for the third time. That's the reality. He's trying to give the same corporations legal immunity if they share your data and spy on the government for them and share their data with the government. Just over a decade ago. Right. He wants to encourage yes, them to yeah. sharing with the government. It wasn't a liberal America or a conservative America. And for those of you who watched the nightly news tonight, we played that 11 minute clip from some of Alex's movies in the early 2000s. Uh, Martial Law, Rise of the Police State, Police State 3, Total Enslavement, and then a little bit of Police State 2. He was talking about everything that's going on right now back then even before that that's right. just he just happened to put in a documentary by then yeah, yeah he was talking about, about the, the surveillance blimps and they just launched the first one that's going uh just this year they launched the first surveillance blimp that's going to be looking right into your home yeah that's but the, the general that that's overseeing the project says i promise you we're not going to be staring at you we're not going to be watching you as you drive up and down the road it's, it's for your protection. We're trying to monitor the East Coast so missiles don't come in. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah they, put that, they put that blimp in the sky. It was for uh, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles or something like that. It wasn't to surveil people. But Too even bad we didn't think of wired, that. It was in Wired magazine that will spy on you through your dishwasher. Too bad we didn't think of that during the Cold War, right? Well, in the next 10 years, almost launched. every American family is going to have up to 50 different items in their home. Yeah, cruise missiles. Yeah, we got a whole lot of those coming over here. Um, yeah, it's, it's a daily thing. Yeah. Proof that the vision itself Those is North misguided. Korean news cruise missiles actually Nine. swim across the ocean before they get here. <laughs> For real? <laughs> yeah, they got to give them a run and start. Time I'm up. sorry, all this comedy on network television we're watching right now is just bringing it out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Time to unleash Team America. I know how <laughs> yeah, it's probably in with that. America. But I still think the cynics are wrong. I still believe that we are one people. <sighs> I still believe that together we can do great things. I believe that too. But we have this and if we big can't, government in I the way trying to this stop is us at every turn. To this is our the apple first pie on to take our money. money. <laughs> yeah. Mom, apple pie, rah, the team America. Yeah. <laughs> our newest officers at West Point, Annapolis, yeah. Colorado Springs, New London. Our newest fast food workers. <laughs> in Newtown. In Boston. Newtown. Yeah, he had to throw that in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In West Virginia. I've watched Americans beat back adversity from the Gulf Coast to the Great Plains. From Midwest assembly lines. We've to also beat back your false flags. I've seen something like gay marriage go from a wedge issue used to drive us apart <laughs> to a story of freedom. Uh, oh, well, still didn't he story of him, gay marriage at the beginning States, of his term or before he got elected? Americans call oh, he was hesitant to support it, I believe. Yeah, he was. I think that's a San Antonio So movie. now the Supreme Court is going to decide that for everybody. So I know the good.
And of course, an optimistic and big hearted generosity of the American They're going to force that we definition on 50%. Live the idea that we 60% of the people who oppose it. And our sister's keeper. And I know they expect those of us who serve here to set a better example. Yeah, I'm waiting to see that. So the question for those of us <laughs> here tonight. Just waiting. Is how we, all of us, can better reflect America's hopes. I've served in Congress with many of you. <laughs> I know many of you well. There are a lot of good people here on both sides of the aisle. And many of you have told me that this isn't what you signed up for. Those all-American... Arguing past each other on cable shows. Workers right there. The constant fundraising. Always looking over your shoulder at how the base will react to every decision. Yeah, let's get rid of elections. Imagine yeah. if we broke Let's out of these talk about the policy. Means his corporate sponsors. Imagine if we did something different. Imagine. What if you just let me make all the rules? <laughs> be the king. <laughs> Understand, a better <laughs> politics isn't one where Democrats oh. abandon their agenda or, or Republicans mm -hmm. simply embrace mine. It's where I transcend you. A better politics is <laughs> oh, one where we appeal to each other's basic decency us. instead of our basest fears. Our Lord and Savior. A better <laughs> politics is one where we debate without demonizing each other. Where we talk issues and to values America and the beautiful and facts. Uh, and right. then he'll just veto you if he... Or trivial right, disagrees. exactly. You don't okay, allow him to be the dictator. To people's daily lives. <laughs> A politics... Even though the $1.7 trillion spending bill was completely counter to America, America's interests, who and made that very clear, by the way, people voted in the midterms, they signed it anyway. And spend more care. time lifting young people up with a sense of purpose and possibility. Asking them to join in the great mission of building America. That's why they're building up. If we're going to have arguments, let's have arguments. War. But let's make them debates worthy of this body and worthy of this country. Okay, why don't you do the stuff that you've said you're going to do? Why don't you close down Guantanamo? Why don't you stop starting wars? How about you stop mm -hmm. sending troops overseas? How about you stop funding all this stuff? Come on, guy. Close corporate. Why don't you give us some government transparency? Ever yeah. since you've yeah. been in August, the opium production in Afghanistan has gone up tenfold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't you see that? That was on one of his charts, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they left that one out. <laughs> this is what I'm the it's proudest of. It's gone up faster of. than automaking. <laughs> Much faster. <laughs> All see something of ourselves in the striving young student. Oh, here we go. And yeah, the debt no that they have. I, I share that. Mom is snatched from her child, and then it's possible. Hey, to you snatch moms from their child if they use cannabis oil to help laws, fight cancers or things like that that their children are having. Yeah. Or if they have raw milk and they transport it across mm -hmm. state lines. Or if they decide they don't want to go through chemotherapy because they think it's not safe or effective. Mm -hmm. Right. Or if they disagree with one of their doctors. And follow yeah, the so. advice of this doctor. Or yeah. if they decide Two not to doctors. take the flu shot, then their child's not able to go to school and they're not able to do their job as well. Don't worry, we'll soon have a computer telling us when to go to the doctor and when to step in the medical <laughs> well, no, chair. Well, I've already had an pills, experience with Watson. Those pills and that are right just, here, they'll just release the toxin into you. It's a sensational experience. We may have different You don't look bad, though, after Ferguson getting out of there. And New York. <laughs> a little bit redder. It was hot in there. <gasps> but and I'm missing a right leg. You can understand a father who <laughs> fears his son can't walk home without being harassed. And surely we can understand the wife who won't rest until the police officer she married walks through the front door at the end of his shift. And surely we can agree that it's a good thing that for the first time in 40 years, the crime rate and the incarceration rate have come down together. And use that as a starting point for Democrats and Republicans community leaders and law enforcement to take more guns. Is he talking about just in the last month that the NYPD has stopped writing tickets? Stopped yeah. Writing tickets. Crime rate went down when Crime they stopped writing 95% of their tickets. Right. But I wonder if the incarceration rate has gone down just because we've had three states legalize marijuana because 80% yeah, of the people in prison are there for the marijuana. Yeah. Rate. Yeah. In in Colorado it has yeah. gone down yeah. a, a little bit, but And of course he's opposed that. Of course, yeah. A state full of high people are a little too tired to be going out robbing banks and holding up <laughs> stores, you know? Yeah. That's what they deserve. <laughs> I have no more campaigns to run.
Thank God. Thank God. My <laughs> only agenda. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't that one. I can't yeah. Keep pushing that one my agenda. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I think he lost this last one. They want to acknowledge it. Can you guys, aren't you guys so pumped for when he becomes an ESPN sportscaster? Oh, God, no, please don't say that. Actually, I wouldn't mind that. He can make the transition right now. No. I, I wouldn't mind it too much. Yeah. I wouldn't He's have to say He's always on anymore. the golf course. What I believe is best for America. He should be leading. If you share the broad vision I outlined tonight, I ask you to join me in the work at hand. You can go work with Bob Costas. I ask you to join me, if not. If you do disagree with parts of it, <laughs> Vito. I hope you'll at least work with me where you do agree. And I commit to every Republican here tonight that I will not only seek out your ideas, I will seek to work with you to make this country stronger. Yeah, he says Republicans, but not third parties, you know, like they won't let Gary Johnson into the debates and oh, no. all the other no. things. Well, he does all this also to set up like he's the good guy, he's the nice guy, but the majority Republican Congress just won't work with them, and they're the party of the rich. They're Let me tell you, the all Republicans, great ideas. The Republicans are going to work with him on some really hideous surveillance state legislation and on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And we're going to talk about this when this is over. And passing exactly. the spending bill. Yeah. They rushed to sign it. I want our actions to tell every child in every neighborhood, your life matters. And we are committed to improving your life chances, as committed as we are to, to working on behalf of our own kids. And we could triple that number if we just get more people across the border. That we are mm -hmm. people who see our differences as a great gift. We'll spend all that money we we're going to use to build a border, and then we're going to uh, build more border patrol stations hundreds of miles inland away from the border, and then we're going to hassle American citizens. That's right, to search your yeah. car. Yeah. In the are you an American free citizen, Because those are constitution-free zones. I'm like, sir, I'm in America. I don't want to answer your question. So then they smash your car window in. That's all right. Come on. That we are still more than a collection of red states and blue states. That we are the United States of America. The corporation of the United States. <laughs> Washington, Inc. INC, not DC. Yeah, we're gonna, once we get past all of these apple pie generalities and the ovations, we're gonna talk about the devil and the details behind what he's talked about. And there's some really atrocious stuff and his plans that he's that been he leaking for the last Future week. generations of the Chinese. It's amazing what you can bounce back from when you have to. It's not that they've locked up and they haven't we turned over to the states as they became states. Family. <laughs> 300 million acres. We're going to take your land and blame it on turtles. All right. Mm -hmm. Has been preserved uh -huh. for future generations. We too are a, a field strong tight-knit family. We too have made it through some hard times. 15 years into this new century, we have picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off, and begun again the work of remaking America. You've got 165,000 fewer troops who are in harm's way, but you have 165,000 fewer troops who aren't getting any health care from the VA, and they're killing themselves in record numbers because they have no one with any kind of idea of what they've been through in the VA health care system to actually help them get through that situation. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, looks like he's done. Yeah, he's done. Thank God. <laughs> Is this the point where Boehner passes out the checks now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have to wait for the cameras to turn off before that happens. <laughs> this is where they flip their chairs upside down, and there's a little number under there, and they try to get door prizes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so who was our... Designated. <laughs> our designated... Yeah, let's play that Boehner clip. I think it's a perfect way to cap this off. Wine asked me to, to give out a half a dozen checks quickly before we got to the end of the month, and I complied. Yes, and I did it on the House floor, which I regret, should not have done. It's not a violation of the House rules. Uh, but it's a practice that's gone on here for a long time that we're trying to stop. And, and I know that <laughs> I'll never do stop. it again. Well, well, the checks from well, the tobacco trying company. to stop. Uh, I think <laughs> if my memory served me correctly, I think it was a tobacco check. Yes. Oh, no, I'll never do it again. Looking back on it. It's a bad practice.
We gotta stop this. <laughs> I'm trying to stop. It, it, like I'm trying to stop like myself, smoking. but I can't. It's like harder smoking. Than... I'm trying to stop. It's a bad practice, and we gotta yeah. stop it. It's I harder mean... than quitting smoking. That's yeah. right. And Passing out those clearly... corporate checks. That was that clearly was trained to speak. Just I get mean... such a rush with that. All right, let's talk about some of the things here. Let's talk about his tax program here. Again, we said it was going to be $320 billion of tax increases. That's greater than the gross domestic product of, and here's some of the, the countries that have a gross domestic product that is less than $320 billion. Denmark, Israel, Finland, Hong Kong, Greece, Ireland, Portugal, New Zealand. This is the amount of money the entire economy of these countries is going to be using that amount of money or more to play with his social engineering is what he's proposing, of course. And they're going to be looking to mandate things. One of the things he didn't talk about is how he's going to mandate uh, individual retirement accounts for all employers who have 10 or more people in their com company. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's going to not help employment. It's not going to help people get raises if they mm -hmm. want to look at... Uh, uh, increasing wages. That's hey, David, yes. before we get too far into this, mm -hmm. let's go to uh, Joe Biggs's report from earlier today. We premiered it today on the Alex Jones show, uh, All right. talking about the Watson system being used to administer VA health benefits. Yay, computers are going to start <laughs> killing our soldiers. That's right. Uh, instead of, I guess, foreign wars. Um, well, I guess they'll finish the job. So we're going to play that, and we're going to turn you guys around, and we'll flip the cameras around and go back to our normal look, and that'll just take a few minutes. So we're going to keep going. Uh, people out there watching us uh, for on the free stream, InfoWars.com uh, forward slash show, and our YouTube channel, the Alex Jones channel, and also those of you who are our PrisonPlanet.tv members. We surely do appreciate all your support. And uh, so we're going to play this, play yeah. a couple ads, flip the cameras around. And David, Rob, take us there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Rob, uh, I want to tell the audience, stick with us because especially on these internet proposals, there's a lot of details that the White House has put out in this last week that he just glossed over. He's just talking about mom and apple pie and waving the flag. But there's a lot of very bad details that have come out. And that's something we should be very concerned about because the Republicans are standing firmly behind him along with a lot of Democrats. The only opposition he's getting, strangely, on things like Trans-Pacific Partnership and Internet Control is coming from his own party. But, of course, now they are in the minority. Obama and the GOP both want these things very badly. So we're going to tell you what he wants to do, and that's very important. So stay with us after this report. In focus, and three, two, one. Tonight, IBM, friend or foe, IBM has been announced as the winner of a long-term VA contract to modernize the electronic health records management system for the embattled VA. IBM will utilize the latest technology to provide up-to-the-minute care for veterans all across this great country. The VA released a statement, we are serious about health of our nation's heroes and are sparing no expense to update, modernize, and create an efficient system to diagnose and provide real-time health care solutions for those who have served our country. We thank IBM, a company that has a long history providing cutting-edge information technology solutions for stepping in, providing leadership and experience that will be valuable to our country and save taxpayers money. Hold on. This isn't who we are. No. Give me those freaking cue cards, man. Ah. You know what? You know what's going to happen with this? You know what the implications are? of this Watson program that's going to come up. It's a computer that they're going to use to replace the doctors at the VA to do the death panels that have been going on to help take away human emotion from making those decisions. This is something that's got to change. This is ridiculous. And I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com, and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm standing outside of the Veterans Affairs Center in Austin, Texas. This will be the proving ground for IBM's brand new technology, Watson. Now what that is is a supercomputer that will have all of your medical records 
admin records, and many other things downloaded into it. They want to use this machine to replace the doctors that have had death panels going on at the VA for years now. Newly released documents expose more explicitly the details of IBM's pivotal role in the Holocaust. All six phases, identification, expulsion from society, confiscation, ghettoization, deportation, and even extermination. Moreover, the documents portray with crystal clarity the personal involvement and micromanagement of IBM President Thomas J. Watson and the company's co-planning and co-organizing of Hitler's campaign to destroy the Jews. Why is the Department of Veterans Affairs awarding IBM with a large contract to bring in Watson, a new technology that will be used to replace doctors in an already failing VA health system? Why are they naming it after Thomas J. Watson, the founder and president of IBM? Did you know this man was responsible for making the machines that created punch cards with a coding system to label and eventually kill thousands of Jews? This machine would generate codes to be tattooed on prisoners in Hitler's concentration camps. This man committed genocide by any standard, and IBM and the VA want to throw it in our face clear as day and name it after that monster. If this doesn't piss you off, I don't know what will. Hitler was so impressed with what Watson had done for the Third Reich that he awarded him with a special award created specifically for the occasion to honor extraordinary service by a foreigner. The medal was the Order of the German Eagle with Star, bedecked with swastikas, and was to be worn on a sash over Watson's cold, dead heart. Why do they want to put a machine in charge of your health, you might ask yourself? They do it so this pre-programmed evil robot can make the life or death decisions about you, the veteran, instead of the doctors that have received so much flack from the VA scandal over the last year. This helps take human emotions away and also allows the medical personnel to use Watson as a scapegoat should any problems arise, like death. Watson will be a new form of medical AI technology used to run the death panels already in place at the VA. How soon will it be until this technology moves over into civilian health care? Will you be a victim of Watson's wrath? This is also happening in another area of the government. They now want to replace humans that fly drones and make them fully autonomous. And many pilots were also claiming PTSD. Once you take the human aspect out of dealing with healthcare and war, things become even more evil. Who is going to check the morals of the men and women who program these machines? How do we know the machines will be told to act ethical and make the right decisions? Well, there you have it. That is the new Watson technology that's going to run the death panels at the already failing VA healthcare system. Now I have a vision of how this Watson technology will be implemented when you walk into the VA. Let's go in here and take a look. Next. What's going on? All right, right arm. All right, uh, Watson has determined you need to step in the medical chamber. So, uh, go ahead. have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. The brainwashing media machine has been turned
turned up on high, and it's time for humanity to double down on the true people's media and strike back against the tyrants that are destroying our civilization with their lies and fraud. We are the resistance. You are the resistance. You are the info war. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the Info War to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014, the most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra-clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12. Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Welcome back to our live coverage of Obama's State of the Union 2015. I'm David Knight, joined with Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson. We've just seen Obama come out and give his uh, statements, his very broad general statements. He didn't talk about any of the details. They've been releasing details for the last week, primarily through social media. And so it's kind of interesting to go back and look at what they're actually proposing. And of course, what he's proposing about education may or may not happen because there's going to be a lot of opposition from Republicans as well as on taxes. But in two other areas, in terms of his internet regulation and in terms of his trans-Pacific partnership, trans-Atlantic partnership, those are issues that he has a lot of support from majority Republicans. It's very likely that those are going to happen. So we're gonna take a look at some of the things. He's made broad sweeping proposals for changes to the internet, changes to privacy, changes to criminal actions, criminalizing and felonizing a lot of things that were misdemeanors before. So we're gonna talk about what he's proposing to do because that's very likely to get passed by the Republicans. I think the first thing we should do before we go to uh, the internet is to talk about this education proposal that he's talking about. And of course, on the White House website, he's got a couple of articles. One of them is the president proposes to make community college free for responsible students for two years. How does he define a responsible student? Well, that's somebody that's going to make 2.5 GPA or better. But the free part, there's a lot of questions about that. He put a graphic up tonight that showed that uh, they were going to pay up to, that 
9 million students would get $3,800 per year that they would save. And of course, you do the math, that comes out to $34 billion. Yet on his site, we see conflicting information saying that they will pay up to $2,500 per year. So they're saying if the average cost is $3,800, they're going to pay $2,500. They also say they're going to pay up to 75%. Not 100%, but up to 75%. And quite frankly, the $2,500 is not 75% of the 3,800. So there's inconsistencies throughout even that broad stroke. He wants to put it out there as something that is free for people. And yet, if you look at the details, the details don't add up to what he's saying at all. That's exactly right. I mean, when you think about the student loan system, you have all these people who that may or may not get these $3,800 or whatever it is to get this, that's pretty much associate's degree, you go to community college, but that associate's degree is worthless. Get an associate's degree in today's market and try to go out and find a job, nobody's going to hire you. Okay. Even if you get that bachelor's degree, then it's like, did you take an internship? Did you jump through all these other flaming hoops of razor wire so we might give you some job, temp job answering the phone or mm -hmm. getting coffee? That's what a lot of these degrees go to nowadays. And it doesn't really leave you with anything worthwhile. Uh, this the vast majority of four-year degrees right. don't really help you economically. And I guess one of the things that really kind of grates on me is the idea that staying in school longer is something that we as a society should reward. And yet there's nothing there to give people credit or to help them along as young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. He's not, certainly not going to propose anything there because it's about keeping you dependent on the government. And as he's saying that he's going to hand out these uh, free two years at college, at the same time, the other hand is stealing the education IRAs that they told families and parents many years ago that they could set aside after-tax money into these education IRAs if they made anything from the investment or from its compounding, mostly they would be invested in mutual funds. If they made any money off their mutual fund investments, they could withdraw that and that would not be taxed. They could apply that directly to their children's education. So these people script and save with their after-tax dollars, put it in something that they hope isn't going to be taxed, and now he's proposing to take that from them. Mm -hmm. Along with that, that's the 509. There's also uh, another one, it's a... Uh, I've got the details here, but there's another one that they're going to completely eliminate altogether that you could uh, set aside $2,000 a year. They're going to completely elim eliminate that one, and the 509, they're going to tax it. So you see the government telling you that it's going to be free on the one hand, and yet they are taking it away and uh, taking away the tax deductions from people who are trying to do the right thing, who are saving, who are working hard, who are trying to be self-reliant. They're going to punish those people. Only the people who come to government for handouts are going to be rewarded. Going to get a little, just enough of a handout to keep you still coming to the state for for that. And I think it's it's very important that we understand how all this plays into the open borders and immigration as well, mm -hmm. because that has all been about. Remember, the focus has been on young people coming across. Of course, right. uh, even the right wing guys like Glenn Peck and George Will were telling us it's eight year olds with teddy bears, and it's like no, the dreamers go all the way up to 31 years old. That's right. the big misconception people don't have because you hear X number of children come over the border every month. 31 year old men, people older than me, qualify as a child under the Dream Act. Yeah, dreamers, right. and that's the key thing for the dreamers is giving them educational uh, opportunities, quote unquote. So that means that it's not, we're not talking about 9 million people. We don't know how many we're talking about. We're creating an entitlement program here. We're opening up the borders to allow everyone from all over the world, not just Central and South America, anyone from anywhere in the world can come into our country, can claim these entitlement benefits, and then we're all gonna be on the hook to pay for it. Right, because right. like he says, all this stuff is free. Somebody has to pay for this stuff at the end of the day. And when you want to talk about people getting in-state tuition, you know, I'm from Oklahoma. I came here to Texas. Nobody offered me in-state tuition. That's because you're you're not an illegal alien. If you're an illegal <laughs> alien, you can get in-state tuition in any of the 50 states. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, you're going to get a free ride. Now, you're talking about uh, making it universal. And he says he wants to make it as universal as high school. He wants two years of college to be free, quote, unquote. Mm-hmm. And as universal as high school. One of the problems I have with this is that we've already got people in school for too long. Right. right. They become dependent on government. They don't think for themselves. They don't get out and start engaging in the real world, learning real skills, learning real interaction. And, of course, they want people to stay inside that government-run cocoon. And so he wants to extend this for another 
two years. That's what that's really about. But let's also understand that you're going to be paying taxes for this. If anybody has pays property taxes, they're going to realize that pretty much all of their property taxes go to pay for that universal high school education mm -hmm. that's out there. So there isn't anything that's free. And this is just right. going to extend the burden of that, plus bring in the dreamers from other countries to, uh, to use these benefits. And it also feeds into this college bubble. You know, as we've been hinting yes. on, a lot of times you'll get out of college, and even if you do find a job in your field, it may take several years to actually get there because they want the internships, all these other things. You know, like many years ago, you may have been able to get a decent job with an associate's degree. You cannot do that anymore. Yes. So it, it continues to feed into that. Let's talk about internet because we said this is going to be really big. And this is something that we believe that they're going to get passed because the Republicans want this very badly. And of course, we now have a Republican in the Senate who's now head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Richard Burr has replaced Dianne Feinstein. He has said that he doesn't think anything that the NSA does should ever be made public in a hearing. They should never have any oversight of the CIA or the NSA. So these are people who are above and beyond even the worst stuff that we have seen coming along the pike. Now, here's the areas that he's talking about. He's talking about FCC control of the Internet. He's talking about faster broadband. He's talking about privacy, hmm. putting, <laughs> putting restrictions on corporations sharing your data when they're turning it over to the government. And at the same time, they're putting out CISPA uh, legislation again to try to grant legal immunity to the corporations who basically uh, turn your information over to the government. And it's David, not just... I noticed you put LOL next to privacy yeah. in your notes. <laughs> yeah, oh. exactly. Do you think that's yeah. funny? Yeah, I think that is amazing, <laughs> a bit of irony there. And then, of course, he's, he's extended the CFAA, which is going to give us a whole lot of new felonies. And so uh, the Internet community is very concerned about this part of the proposal. This is where there's a lot of devils in the detail. Let's talk about first... FCC control. Last week, he said that Congress doesn't really need to get involved in this. This is something that he says the FCC already has uh, 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 authority in. Mm -hmm. And clearly, they don't. The FCC has never been involved with the Internet, and there's no reason for the FCC to get involved in the Internet. The FCC was set up to allocate broadband for broadcast, uh, not broadband. They were set up to uh, allocate broadcast uh, frequency so that people didn't uh, run over each other. They don't need to do that with the internet. We don't need any internet control. And so what they're saying is we're going to, and this is where the lies come in. They're saying we're going to set up the FCC to make sure that the internet is free. Mm -hmm. well, the internet has been free. It's right. already free. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, free they and open. Freer for them. Exactly. And <laughs> one of the ironies that he says here, he says there should be no gatekeepers as, and then he talks about, and as the FCC considers new rules, okay, the FCC is going to become the gatekeepers. They're going to make the rules. They're going to control this. And the FCC has already been on both sides of the net neutrality issue. Debate. They, have, they have switched on both sides. They will do whatever they need to. Right now, uh, the general public wants to have net neutrality. They want to keep things the way that they are. So that's what they're selling the public. Once they get that authority, they can flip just like that. As right. we've already seen and them the do. Keeper. And then cities that have successfully set up their own high speed internet, their, their own broadband system, they are now facing um, against these giants Google, Time Warner, Comcast, all these mergers, ATT. They are trying to stop these cities from being able to set up their own um, municipal networks. And absolutely. I mean, that's what it is it's, it's taking the power away from the states. Absolutely. So they're going to centralize control. They're going to use the FCC. They're going to use the FCC as part of a multi-prong attack. They're going to come after us with security regulations to protect us from hackers. Mm -hmm. They're going to come after us with the FCC. They're going to come after us with taxes. They're going to come after us with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And why you say would we have uh, internet control as part of a trade agreement? Well, there's a lot of stuff and these so-called trade agreements that have nothing to do with trade, free or otherwise, but they're gonna oppose us. Real quickly, let's go to a faster broadband. And again, I think it's ironic that they wanna talk about faster broadband when 
one of the reasons we're getting things so slow is because we have the uh, NSA <laughs> the basically tapping in. You've got to send a text, and it's got to go That's to the right. NSA first and then to your friend. All right, for yeah. everybody who doesn't know about the NSA, I've been to a facility in San Antonio. Uh, I believe uh, Gucciardi and some of the other guys went to a different facility. I mean, they're all around mm -hmm. the United States, and there are these huge buildings where they pretty much sift through your data, your cell phone calls, your Internet searches, you know, all your things. They look at your pictures on Facebook and all this stuff, looking for terrorists. And for everybody who says this is some old wise tale or whatever, you can watch, uh, one of the shows I like to watch is uh, 48 Hours Mystery. It comes on CBS. And it, it's all these murder cases. But basically somebody commits a crime and then they go and they show you everything they've ever done on social media ever, ever and they use it against them in a court of law. And I'm not saying you should be doing things you shouldn't be doing, but I'm just saying this stuff is being collected on you. Right, that's well, and exactly I just want to say these facilities aren't very green either for all you greenies out there. They use a lot of water, a lot of <laughs> yes. electricity, um, a lot of resources to store all this data. Right, that's and why Utah is trying to shut off their water. And that's a very interesting NSA. approach to shut down uh, the data collection center is to talk about how we cannot afford to provide this amount of water in a very dry state right. like Utah. And it's not just siphoning off to the NSA, but now it's being siphoned off to the Stingray surveillance system and all these other surveillance uh, streetlights and mm -hmm. you know, the Intella streetlights and things like that that are scooping up all of your data and then sending it to third parties, who knows what, and all the smart homes. and The government has such an insatiable appetite to know everything about us that it needs more broadband so it can spy on us with exactly. the Internet of Things, as, as Joe Biggs talked about, there's, you know, the number of devices that you're going to have in your home, all of them capable of spying on you, all of them feeding into your Internet that you're paying for. Mm -hmm. And if you're paying for it... Why uh, do you need a smart dishwasher or a smart <laughs> refrigerator that tells you when you're out of milk, you can tell when you're out of milk? Well, you don't, right. but the CIA wants you to have one for their own purposes. The next thing, again, <laughs> the privacy, the head fake about limiting corporations from sharing your data. At the same time, they're talking over and over about the cyber intelligence sharing protection program. You know what? They're only going to protect the corporations. They're going to grant them legal immunity when they share your data with mm -hmm. the government. Essentially making the case that if you're doing business with a corporation, then they own all the information that they collect about you, whether you know they're collecting that information about you or not. You have agreed to do business with uh, the, your telephone company or with your ISP or with whoever you've connected to on the internet. So any information that they collect about you is equally theirs as much as it is about you. Now, we don't believe that's true. Right, well, because when all of this uh, NSA surveillance first came out, a lot of people were, like the Yahoo and Google, and their first instinct was to say, well, we, we, we didn't know, we didn't do it, you know, protect us from these pending lawsuits that are going to come. People say you're, you're violating our rights. So now they're protecting those people, and obviously it's going to come out when healthcare.gov really, you know, really takes off. People who are using healthcare.gov their private data, their health information, which is historically extremely private data, mm -hmm. is now being shared with third parties. Mm -hmm. And then those third parties can share them with other parties and who knows how wide the net is cast. Um, but this is confirmed now and they're basically using it to track people, building these online profiles, which are of course vital for advertisers. And you know, the interview that I had earlier tonight just talked about how advertising is all this mind control. And so the more data they can have on us, the easier it's going to be for them to control us. It's not just about, oh, well, you know, I like this, so I'm, I'm glad that I'm being targeted with this advertising because it's a relevant ad. It's about controlling you, controlling your ideas. Yes. Yes, it's not. They're not just passively lurking there like some kind of a creepy voyeur watching everything that's going on in your life. They're taking this data. They're mining this data. They're looking at how they can manipulate you after they characterize what you're about and determine that you're a person of interest. I mean, if you're somebody that just checks out and all you do is watch sports and listen to music, they're not interested in you. If you're engaged in politics, they're going to figure out where you are in the political spectrum. They're going to target you with information. And you have to understand, this is very much like they've always done with um, gerrymandering. In terms of going in, they would, they would pick the voters to make sure they got the results that they want. We saw this in North Carolina when, after decades of Democrat control, they went of the, uh, of the local state government, the local uh, state house and senate, 
they went from re Democrat control to Republican control. There was a sea change there where everybody, uh, Republicans swept everything except Congress. Congress didn't change in that one election because they had gerrymandering in place so precise that they had those, those uh, incumbents maintain that 2010 election. But 2010 was a year that they had the census and the state legislature got to redraw those boundaries. And then you saw everything change because they picked the voters. Now what they're doing with social media is they're going to determine, and they've already done it, they're gonna determine who you are and where you are on the political spectrum. And then they're going to use that to push their information to you to control you. That's exactly. how they're going to pick the voters and manipulate the voters. It isn't gonna be something as old fashioned as gerrymandering. They're going to go directly to you through social media. Let's talk now about these new felonies that are coming out. And I mentioned yesterday on the Nightly News, this article from Wired Magazine, written by one of their contributing editors, talking about how he had been a consultant on the new movie, Black Hat from Michael Mann. And he talked about how in awe he was of Michael Mann and Miami Vice. And of course, we know that Miami Vice was used to sell a very uh, different image of the war on drugs that exists in reality, basically glorifying mm -hmm. civil asset forfeiture, making it a game, showing uh, that only the really bad guys lost their cigar boats and their Ferraris and uh, Tubbs and Crockett got to drive around in these things, never showing how it was really being applied to take uh, all the cash that they might come across from s some uh, poor landscaper who was doing business in cash, steal all of his money, steal his car, look and see that there's one person in a car as they're doing today, one person in a car that's got a, a joint that's visible and they confiscate the entire car from the other guy, even though that guy's not driving, it's not his car, they take the entire car. So they've already used Michael Mann to sell the, the war on drugs. Now they're using Michael Mann essentially to sell the cyber war. And that's what this uh, fellow said. He says, yeah, this is really great. And then I got kind of scared on Tuesday evening when I saw the details of Obama's cyber proposals. And this is what he said. He was very concerned about the fact that they're stepping up this Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. This CFAA is what they came after Aaron Schwartz with. And they were going to try to send him to jail for 35 years. And presumably, according to the official story, he committed suicide because he was so distraught over that. I don't believe that for a moment. Yeah, so many that people. wasn't his that personality. Yeah. Yes. And there was a tweet out from the prosecutor's husband that said that, wait a minute, when everybody pushed back against her and said, you drove him to suicide uh, trying to get this draconian legislation pushed, on, trumping up these charges to a 35-year thing. He said, wait a minute, she offered him three and a half month uh, plea bargain deal and he turned it down. That's the public Aaron Schwartz that we had seen, the fighter. Right. So I don't believe that he committed suicide. Nevertheless, they're going to up this. They're going to now um, specifically first time offenses that don't involve credit cards or more than $5,000 in information. Those crimes will now be felonies instead of misdemeanors. They say also CFAA violations would qualify, and this is very important, for prosecution under the RICO statute, meaning, for example, if a member of Anonymous is busted in a petty denial of service attack, she might now be held legally accountable for every cyber crime they say Anonymous has committed. So wow. when they start making these things into felonies, when they start saying if there's any kind of tangential connection between you and somebody else that we can make, we're going to throw everything. We're going to attribute all of that to you with the RICO statute. Mm -hmm. It's also the prison industrial complex because you put everybody in, in these prisons for these petty offenses. You got people go to prison for check fraud, you know, yes. little nickel and dime offenses. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's obviously a way to scare off hackers from hackers that are the white hat hackers that are on the good team from, act, you know, it's just like the way they want to shut down any of the whistleblowers. It's a way to say, Absolutely. We're the only ones that can, you know, hack into Yes, the we're, we're about out of time. We're not going to go through the details of this, but this is what the computer community is saying. Warning to white hat hackers, Obama's proposal is a threat to what you do. They're saying they cannot even do their work. If they expose the vulnerability in a Microsoft Windows program, for example, mm -hmm. and say, hey, here's a vulnerability, you need to fix it. Under these proposals, they could be charged with a felony. So it's going to shut down white hat hackers as well. And I think that's interesting because the only details that we know about the Trans-Pacific Partnership that's being negotiated are the ones that have been released from WikiLeaks. And of right. course, they would make that a felony.
they would come after those people with a uh, RICO statute. And there were some interesting articles about how this is uh, breaking down. Politico pointed out that uh, there's some very disparate uh, bedfellows here, people who are on the far left and people who they would characterize as being on the far right. Of course, we understand that they just care about civil liberties in this area. That'd be people like Walter Jones and Duncan Hunter, they say, are aligning with liberals and the Democrat Party to try to oppose Obama and the GOP who are trying to ram through this trade agreement. And he said already back in November that that was a very high priority for him. So that's what we have to look forward to. That's what they're negotiating with these corporations and private. I think I'm, I'm very concerned about how this is going to be a pervasive consolidation as we saw with NAFTA. One of the things they said was in NAFTA, the people in the Democrat Party are very concerned about that because they don't like the way that that turned out. They say, well, uh, don't worry, it's not going to be a repeat of that. It is absolutely yeah. going to be a repeat of that. It's going to be the next step, the consolidation. As we pointed out before, you have these regional trade authorities that they set up like the European Union and NAFTA, and now they're consolidating them into a larger step. It's the next step as part of a global corporate governance, and that's what right. we're all very concerned about. Yeah, well, the giant sucking sound that took all of our jobs out with NAFTA. I mean, there aren't any yes. other jobs to yes. ship off. Yes, absolutely. And of course, it's another way that they're going to attack internet freedom. Well, that's it for our broadcast tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us for this live coverage of Obama's State of the Union address. Stay tuned. We're going to cover what they try to do to us in terms of taking over the internet. If you're not a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, please consider becoming a subscriber and uh, supporting our operation here. If you're not a subscriber to our YouTube channel, that's free. But of course, if you become a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, you can get that right now for $29.95, and you can share that with up to 20 people. That brings you the nightly news every night, Monday through Friday, and it also gives you and all of your friends access to Alex Jones's documentaries. And of course, that's the best way to wake people up, to give them the broad perspective. And then keep in touch with what's going on on a daily basis with the nightly news. Thanks for joining us. Join us tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. And wake up, America. Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high-quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. 
The Molon Lave Silver Coin, certified by the Provident Mint. This one-ounce silver round is 0.999% fine silver, inspired by the legendary Spartan King Leonidas and his refusal to lay down arms in defiance of Emperor Xerxes. Molon Lave, that's Greek for come and take it. This is available now at InfoWarsStore.com. Act now as supplies are limited. And don't forget, free shipping and a free gift. That's InfoWarsStore.com. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. We'll get the answers. I'm joking. You just waterboard people? What? Uh, it's a joke. I don't support waterboarding, even really? though Dick Cheney, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Dick Cheney, though. I'm so shocked. I'm joking. All right, let's go ahead and talk to um, uh, 